Hey, good morning, everyone. Um, right, so today's stream, I'm going to be doing a bit more work on finishing up the ghasts. Uh, so you guys haven't actually seen the ghasts. Uh, the ghouls were all sculpted on stream, and the uh, ghouls are finished and test printed and ready to go now. Uh, we've one minor exception, unfortunately. Um, let me just show you which one it is. I'm test printing them. I realise we've got an issue uh, because one of my ghouls, which is, uh, is it this one? Yeah, this guy. So basically, his leg and his hand are far too far apart. <clears throat> so I'm going to have to do a little bit of rejigging on him just to make him work properly. Uh, and the issue is that he doesn't actually sit on a base. So if I just pull the, uh, the base over, you'll see what I mean. Oops, I lost him. So, yeah, so if I just bring this base over. Oh god. Come on, Zebrush, sort yourself out. <clears throat> so this is a 25mm base, which is the standard. Um, if I put his feet on the base. Then his rock hand is like a mile away. Um, and if I try and put his rock on the base, then his foot's hanging off the back. So I need to do a little bit of rejigging on him uh, just to make him work. So I will get that one done. <coughs> I'll put him up as he is because he's still a usable model. Uh, he just needs a larger base. Um, but I will get around to uh, tweaking and adjusting his proportions a little bit. Not his proportions, sorry, his pose. Um, and then we're on to the Gast, which is the new one for this month, uh, for this next set. So, <clears throat> I called them to descent into Avernus. I need seven ghouls and four ghasts. So we've done eight ghouls. And I've got one ghast here. So this guy is kind of a ghoul champion, I suppose, is the best way of describing him. Um... So yeah, so I've been going through this model so far. You can see I've added like the bandages and straps around his, around his arms, done some around his head. So we've like covered over the one eye. Um, <coughs> so next up will be. Um, I need to finish these bandages on his foot and then I need to add like the kind of the ties here and here so for the ties I'll just add a cube and we'll stretch it out and we'll just shape it uh, for the bandages on the foot here I'll show you what I've done so I've, I've duplicated the body so we've got the body here which you can see in the bottom uh, which is um, just the body without any bandages and then we've got a duplicate body with the bandages uh, and all I've done is I've done I've duplicated it there and I've just sculpted roughly the shape I want to achieve um, so kind of wrapping around the, the body all the way uh, to achieve the bandage look now I want to just go in with the um, that intensity 25 with a a Z, sorry, a Z intensity of about 25 on my all cracked brush. And I'm inverting it, and all I want to do is just want to create a nice sharp ridge to the outside of the bandage. And the reason for doing that is, <coughs> again, when you paint these things, let's assume for the sake of argument you're going to use a wash and a dry brush which if you're painting monsters and minions and things like that for your games uh, then you know that's a nice quick way of doing it which is probably the, the method most DMs and gamers are going to take uh, then you're going to use a wash and a dry brush and you want the wash to sit into the sunken area the dry brush to pick up the raised areas and that's going to give you some contrast and help show it as a uh, 
as a bandage rather than like a leather strap or whatever. Um, so for me, I think I would personally paint them white to start with and then use something like Skeleton Horde Contrast Paint um, on the length of the bandage and that will sit into all the recesses whilst leaving the tops kind of a creamy colour. Um, I never find it that good for actual skeletons though. I don't like the I don't like the look for bone, um, but for like parchment and bandages and stuff, it's actually pretty ideal. Okay, so I'm using uh, dynamic topology on this as well. That just means it doesn't matter what my what my topology is doing, what my mesh is doing. I can still do the bits I need to do. And then I'll do a, a smoothing pass. I'm just going to just quickly smooth over. I'm only smoothing on the middle of the bandages because they've not been touched since the original ball count. If I smooth over the sharp edges, I'm going to lose the sharpness. I just want to stay in the middle of the bandage. If I was doing this at a larger scale, I'd probably do a few extra little creases and folds and stuff within the bandage. <coughs> Excuse me. Within the bandage kind of boundaries, so you don't you get like little creases like that going on. And that'll help to kind of give you a little bit of extra texture and stuff. But for for a 28-32 mil scale miniature, it's kind of unnecessary. Um, it, it, muddies the waters a little bit in terms of the detail and definition of what you're looking at on the tabletop. So one of the big issues you will always encounter is like if you if you over detail a model, in fact let's just let's just rewind a minute. One of the biggest things you've got to consider when you do miniatures is that they're going to be viewed from like three foot away, arm like arm's length. So if you can't see the detail from kind of arm's length um, you've got to question why it's there. Now obviously there are there are painters in the hobby who enjoy just painting so you can obviously provide them um, with a little bit of an additional material and obviously everybody enjoys the little details you know so if, when you're talking about like kit loadouts and things like that it's all storytelling so it is nice to have them but in terms of actual I'm talking about textures and things like that when you're talking about texture the more texture you have the more difficult it's going to be able to read at a distance and that's where you're going to come unstuck a little bit so We've now got bandages on the arms, we've got them on the head, we've got um right, I've got I need a knot on this side I think. Right here. And there is I don't know actually that's not right. <coughs> Realistically, here I need a knot. Oh, yeah, the other thing I can do on here as well, by the way, I can knock back the body so I can carve into it and that will create, uh, create a sharper definition on the model. So, what I don't really want to see, I want to see the bandages in green. Morning, Rich, how are you doing, chap? I want to see the bandage is green, but I don't really want to see any of the body green in the ideal world. Um, so, what I will do, because it's going gonna, it's gonna to cause issues with detailing and stuff, but what I'll do is I'll just take this chunk of body out. I'm just going to mask a load of it off. Rich, we'll be doing your uh, we'll be doing the halfling um, 
half in Garsman shortly for you. That's a project for next week. Well, later this week, really. <clears throat> so, for anybody who's missed the previous streams and whatever else, uh, the models I'm going to be working on for March, I'm going to go and revisit my old. Um, <coughs> My old City Watch minis. So they were some of the first ones I ever released, actually. Um, done in the style of Discworld, the Angle Report City Watch. So we've got Commander Commander, Gr uh, Vi uh, Commander Grimes, sorry, as the uh, as the leader with his little Swamp Dragon sat on his shoulder and a crossbow, and a, a nice meaty cigar, of course. I'll put you on a Shetland, mate. What would you prefer? There's no reason some of the guards can't be mounted, is there? I mean, that picture of you riding the Shetland pony, that was pretty uh, pretty funny, mate, and that did fill me with ideas. So, yeah, so like I said, we're going to be doing the um, the Discworld City Watch type characters, but they're going to be... Uh, they're not actually going to be Discworld City Watch. There will be a few... I do want to include like Angua and Carrot and some of the other kind of like personalities in there, um, but not in such a blatant way, if you like. They're not going to be literally them. Um, obviously, you can proxy them in if you want. But so so far, I've got uh, Rich is going in. Um, who's in the chat now? We've got uh, Bunker is going in. Um, Rosie, White Rose Dragon, uh, is also going to be one of the guards. Um, Nerd Harla is going to be a guard as well. Uh, Josh Matkin from the Pickle Jar. Elston, of course, but Elston's going to get his own miniature. Yeah, man, we'll do the. Uh, we'll, we'll, we'll go for Shetland Pony with you then. I think that'll be pretty cool. Um, and a few of the people have kind of contacted me asking about being um, immortalised as a City Watch. So every single character that's going to get made for this City Watch set is going to be the likeness of somebody. You know. Oh, uh, Ross at Fohammer is going to be one. I've already got Ross's head as well from his uh, from when I did his resculpt of his um, of his noggin. So if you haven't seen the Fohammer blog uh, recently on YouTube, check him out. But he's uh, he got given a um, <coughs> he's one of these lucky buggers who gets all these three D printers and stuff to test from um, you know Frozen and any cubic and Elegoo and whatever. So uh, he gets all this like swag sent through the post. Um, one of the things he had recently was. Um, A 3D scanner. Now, don't get too excited because it wasn't great. Um, you can, in theory, 3D scan yourself, and if you look at the guy on the adverts when they're showing it, he does get a fairly decent scan of himself. Um, however, the guy also has no facial hair um, and he's wearing a beanie hat. Um, and basically, what it turns out is the minute you try and scan anything that's got hair on it, uh, the 3D scanner cannot deal with hair and it gives you these awful artifacting all over the surface of the model um, which kind of unfortunately kind of makes it unusable um, so I know mean, Ross had tried loads of times to get these scans done um, and he just about managed to get something that looked like his face <coughs> oh mate gutted Yeah, send us a picture over, mate, and I'll get that one run, rustled up for you. I'll sort you out on that one. Um, <clears throat> but yeah, as I was saying, the um, yeah, what do we call it now? The scanner. 
you'll see it all over the place. I'm, I'm seeing adverts from all over, all over Facebook and Instagram at the moment. Um, they are plugging it hard and running an ad campaign. Uh, but you will never be able to scan a miniature with it, so you'll just about be able to get, kind of get a kind of something that is vaguely akin to your own head. But unfortunately, it's going to need a fair bit of additional sculpting work to kind of be usable. <coughs> hey, no worries, Rich. Uh, so yeah, it's going to need a lot of work to be usable. <coughs> and then, unfortunately, uh, oh, AJ Nevins, thank you for the follow. Unfortunately, the issue we're always going to have um, with these things is that they're not. People are going to be trying to buy them to 3D scan miniatures, and it's never going to work, mate. So uh, yeah, unfortunately, we are a long way off. I think getting a a reasonably priced scanner that can deal with um, digitising physical miniatures. Because we've got like, um, there's a lot of companies out there with physical miniature ranges, and obviously, I think they're going to be dreading um, 3D scanners becoming commonplace in the market because it's bad enough, obviously, having recasts going on. Um, but if people start pirating miniatures using a 3D scanner um, then obviously it's going to open up a whole new world of hurt for these like smaller companies that are um, independents <coughs> trying to kind of make a, a miniature range and make a living out of it all so um, yeah hopefully hopefully price point on anything that could stay right high um, I think at the moment you're looking at because I did look into it for one of my clients recently you're looking at around about um, 15 grand for anything that can come close to doing miniatures so you'd have to be a pretty determined pirate if you were going to kind of go down that route right there we go, I've carved away all of the excess stuff now so we've just got um, bandages left So, in relation to a normal gas, let me just show you uh, a normal ghoul, sorry. You can see the gas is a little bit bigger. This is like a hero one. I don't think they're actually stronger than a, a ghoul. They are just more intelligent, but I thought I'd make them a little bit bigger. They're supposed to be a bit more ghostly and ethereal, so. Um, <clears throat> honestly, it's a bit of a struggle to try and like visually differentiate a ghast and a ghoul. So I'm just going for the elven ears and the um, thing, although there was a story... Morning Pointy, how you doing chap? There was a story I was reading in um, when I was uh, swatting up on all this kind of stuff and it was about a dwarven stronghold um, that basically ends up with uh, the inhabitants of the stronghold becoming ghasts. So you've got like dwarven ghasts running around which I thought sounded quite cool. But then because I did all human ghasts in the, um, sorry, all human ghouls, it feels weird throwing dwarven ghasts in there now. So I think at some point, um, I mean, I obviously, I already, as you're probably aware, I do already have intentions to do elf skeletons and dwarf skeletons to add to my undead range. Um, <clears throat> so, Snowyak, how are you doing, sir? Hey, Jen Evans, good morning. So yeah, so I want to be doing the uh, Elven Skeletons and Dwarven Skeletons, uh, and then also Elven Zombies and Dwarven Zombies. So I suppose the next logical evolution is to then do uh, Dwarven and Elven Ghasts and Ghouls. So just a little bit of racial variation, just to mix it up a touch. So how are we all doing today anyway? <clears throat> We've got a few new chatters in the uh, thing just popped up, so is everybody alright? Everybody doing well? So you just see me working on my uh, on my ghoul and ghasts and what like this morning. So I've done uh, seven ghouls. Let me just turn them all on for you, so you can see them all. Right, let's turn this guy off because he's he's at surplus to requirement. Uh, I'll turn on the ones that we've done so far. You can see them.
Okay, so there's the current set of ghouls. Let's turn that up. <laughs> Ain't no worries, mate. Do you know what? I actually didn't tweak it with you. Uh, Snow Yak. Um, I knew the name. I recognised the name. And I was sitting there thinking, I know this. I, I, this is somebody I know, but I can't think where from. Um, but yeah. Twig now, mate. <laughs> it's one of these un unfortunate things when you're loading products onto the uh, Shopify site. We have um, we have all like the digital products there, uh, and they they basically end up um, taking an awful long time to actually physically upload. Uh, and yeah, unfortunately, it's uh, you refresh the page too soon or forget to press the publish button, and all of your upload fails. Uh, and there's obviously there's nothing then to show for your efforts and we don't know about it until you place an order for something and then uh, we have an item on there that is sitting there listed as unfulfilled which is exactly what happened with your uh, your order but I, say, I, I know what it is now when I see it so I can catch it and um, and correct it so it's all good anyway AJ, why have you been up all night? You not very well or you're working to deadlines or painting minis? Gonna be lagging today a little bit. <coughs> Pointy made it as a YouTuber. <laughs> nice, <laughs> very nice. You're getting all the free swag in the post now. Split mm, mast. I just want to work on this on this bit now. Interesting for my Patreon? In what way? Yeah, the Patreon's... Um, it's been running for a few years now. I was doing it before most most people have... Uh, kind of been doing the uh, STL Patreons, but... Unfortunately, I've not made it to the point where I can be a massive studio and... Uh, well, AJ, if you, if you need to be doing any venting or anything like that, we've got our... Um, Our Discord channel. You can always pop over there and have a little uh, join in for a little chat and a little bit of a, a chin wag, talk hobby and talk stuff to kind of clear your head. Just do the uh, hashtag the, the Discord thingy. Bunker normally does this for us, but he's not here at the moment. <laughs> there you go. You can join onto the uh, onto the server there, and you can come and chat to us uh, as, as much as you like. So if you need a sympathetic ear or you want to have a little uh, a little chinwag on hobby stuff then uh, fire up. DM me if you need to, but Right then guys, let's uh, where was I at? Oh yeah, yeah, so I was saying about the uh, like the Patreon and everything. So I obviously started my Patreon um, back in August of 2019 it was um, that was a it feels like a, a lifetime ago now but um, yeah I was kind of doing it before I think, I think when I was doing it there was like 40 people providing STL files and that was it and then Covid happened and then every man and his dog jumped on the bandwagon and uh, you know market boomed and the arse fell out of the industry in terms of like profitability and whatever so it became a lot more difficult to to kind of make a living doing it just because of the saturation in the market really um, so at the moment I actually most of my revenue comes from sales from my person my actual direct website um, unfortunately as uh, much as I loathe to say it, my mini factory still accounts for a lot of my um, what do you call it, my revenue. And then um, 
Patreon and tribes and stuff that are actually a very small, very small portion of uh, of where I earn my money now. Most of it actually is, is commission work at the moment. <coughs> so I've been doing. Um, AJ, absolutely. You just uh, pop, pipe up on the um, on the chat. Come and find me on the, on the uh, Discord. I'm on there as a uh, Dan Lyons Tower. So, yeah, fire up, have a little uh, chat, and if you want to uh, clear your brain or vent a little bit or chat hobby and clear your head, then absolutely, we're there for you. Okay, so I think we're nearly there with this guy. I need to do some tatters at the top of the skirt and then we can go on to a second pose for another ghast. Oh, let's put a dynamic tessellation on here or this is going to get really ugly. Oh guys, also, just as a as an aside, let me just uh, show you all something here because this is something that may be of interest to some of you. Um, what is going on here? Guys, can I just check if anybody can actually go to my website, thelionstower.com. I'm getting a, a your connection is not private. Um, message, and I don't know how to stop, how to fix this. Let me just uh, send a message to uh, somebody. We're getting this sorted if this is an issue. going on so basically whenever I'm trying to get onto my website at the moment I'm getting this um, so there's a it looks like the HTTPS bit is not working now normally there's a little thing to say just go there anyway I don't know what's going on with it. Um, so I noticed I had this a couple of days ago, but um, no, I'll refer it on anyway. What I was going to say was uh, if you can get on there, uh, there's now an option on the um, on the header menu uh, to join the affiliate program so I've now set up an affiliate package uh, so if you're doing any like streaming or if you're doing any kind of you know if you've got friends who are going to be buying stuff um, or you're writing any blogs or you want to just host it on your Facebook page and share stuff or posting pictures of like the models you've painted of mine um, what you can do is you can use the affiliate link on there uh, and if anybody uses your affiliate link to buy anything from the website uh, then you'll get uh, a 10% kickback on everything that they purchase. So, um, you know, if somebody spends 100 quid with me, you get a tenner. So it's a uh, if you're doing a lot and you you know 
you're planning on uh, showcasing a lot of work, you've got a decent following on there, you can probably make a few quid on it. <laughs> yeah, I, I, I couldn't find. A, I couldn't find. I normally have a, a load automatically. Uh, sorry, go to the website anyway option, but for this one on mine, I've not had it. I can get in there from the back end. The back end's fine, but it's the front end that's uh, that's posing me an issue. So I preferred it onto Andy anyway, because Andy's Andy's the guy who helped me set up with the. Uh, ah, thanks for the sub, Rich. Appreciate that, mate. Yeah, Andy helped me set my um, set my site up. So yeah, it's one of those. Uh, I need to be on multi stream, don't I? It's just one of those annoying things. I can't. I can do back end stuff, but I can't view the website from the front end. In fact, you know what? I can show you what I'm talking about here because I can go to the back end, can't I? Online store. View my store. There we go. Okay, so we've got it here now. So if you go to the uh, become an affiliate page, um, just up here, then you get like a little apply now button. Um, when you click on apply now, uh, you'll get grilled with like an interrogation type form, which not my design. I do apologise up front. Um, but you'll get um, discount codes for your own stuff, you'll get uh, free products um, I haven't put any free products in there but there will be stuff in there uh, that you'll be able to kind of like earn and kind of gain as, a, as an affiliate um, and the sales commission is the important bit so that was the main thing I wanted to make sure was up and running so the discount code is a standing, I think you get 25% discount for being an affiliate um, but then also the sales commission uh, is like ten percent. Uh, I am going to put like a partners um, level um, commission thing in there. So basically, if you end up kind of doing a lot of commissions, I'm going to bump that up to twenty percent. Um, <clears throat> but you'll have to have generated like X amount of sales or something like that to to kind of get the the increased percentage. But basically, it just means if if you're helping to drive a lot of traffic to me, then you'll be you'll be well rewarded for it. So. You know, help make me a millionaire and uh, earn yourself a few quid in the process. <laughs> I can dream, mate. Eh? So today's a funny day actually because it's the uh, Haley's gone and um, she's been asked by the uh, head teacher down at the kids' school to do some tutoring. Um, they've got some issues with uh, a group of kids. I think it's basically knock on from COVID, basically, but kids going into like sats and stuff um, like later this year that are just like not prepared for it um, and uh, they're behind where they need to be so yeah they've asked her to go in and do some tutoring so she's gonna for the first time in like two years now she's gone back to do something that is actually um, you know related to her past her past life as a teacher she, you know, she's she's not reveling in it. If I'm honest, she's <laughs> she's dreading the idea of going back and having anything to do with teaching at the moment. But it's only two days a week, so it's not the end of the world. But yeah, I know she's not listening. But good luck, darling. Just in case she watches it back later. The, uh, the thing in here, give it some some tatters and tears and all that kind of good stuff. Right now, another quick heads up as well. Uh, tomorrow's stream uh, it may be cancelled, it may be postponed, it may be starting late. Yeah, AJ, absolutely, you fire away. Do you know what? I haven't even got Discord open. Um, 
<clears throat> there's a load of uh, self promo pages in there, so you can share like uh, oh, what do you call it? Instagram pages. Um, if you've got any kind of like portfolios online of like your work and you want to uh, you want to showcase anything there, you can do that too. Um, Yeah, AJ, fire links in. Um, anything you want to post up into the uh, self promo, you can use. Uh, requests and suggestions if you want to ask me to make anything, you can pop it into there. Um, painting, show your work off if you want to post up pictures in there. Miniature design discussions we use for like chatting about, uh, you know. Like for designs for this, like if you've got any ideas for this one here, for example, you could post up images and whatever else in there. Um, and then uh, general chat and printing chat. So, yeah, just take your pick, find the one that's most appropriate for you, and just fire away. Morning, Martin, how are you doing? Hope you're keeping well, sir. Got Tracy with you today. So I'm just going to uh, sharpen up the edges here. I'm going to put a few little holes and tatters and things like that just to kind of notch it up. But yeah, the reason I got onto affiliates and uh, all that kind of stuff in the first place. So um, obviously you know I do work with uh, with Chris at um, Cursed Empire. He's just had a very successful weekend in Cannes doing the, uh, the miniatures. Um, Wargaming festival over there. Uh, so hopefully next year I might be able to kind of get out to that one with him. But unfortunately this year it fell on the uh, same weekend as Haley's birthday, so it's a, a big no for me, unfortunately. So yeah, so uh, <clears throat> let me just show you my latest. Let's call them a let's call them a partner rather than a client. Um, so check these guys out online, uh, Winter's Tales. So if you like your D and D kind of like uh, storytelling and whatever else, uh, these guys, uh, the, uh, another AJ again, um, AJ Winters runs the things. She's the DM. Uh, very creative lady. Um, she literally built an entire world from scratch. Uh, so although we've got D and D, technically it's D and D Dungeons and Dragons. There's no D and D content in there. It's all homebrew. Um, lots and lots and lots of kind of like unique stuff going on in there uh, and she, she's pretty cool and badass as well AJ is um, with a wicked sense of humour so go and have a little look uh, and check out their um, their streams they're the only um, D&D studio in uh, Australia so they actually have a full studio set up where they have all the games around the table um, but also you'll see down here when you come to the sponsors now um, I am now uh, up here, listed up uh, as a platinum sponsor, um, which uh, is basically because I'm helping to create their miniature range. So you're going to start seeing. Uh, I can't share the, the stuff I've done for them now. There's a, a stream going live tonight. Um, well, I say tonight. It's Australian tonight, so <laughs> Tuesday evening in Australia, whatever. However, that works out here. So it could be live any time back now, really. But they are going to be running um, a story, and one of the encounters is going to be a, a model that I've sculpted for them. So um, it'll be the first one of the range. It's going to be sold through their website as well. <clears throat> so yeah, if you uh, have a little look, and you'll see 
one of my creations pop up, I can't showcase it beforehand because it's a complete surprise for the players. So on the off chance anybody who is part of the uh, the game team kind of like sees this and starts like picking up spoilers and whatever, then uh, let's go have a look at that. <coughs> so yeah, so have a little um, have a little look, little, little look. It's winterstalesco.com. <coughs> Excuse me. Oh. I see AJ. Writing, drawing, and knitting. Okay, again, let's, uh, as we're chatting to AJ in the chat, let's have a little look. So here we go, we can see AJ's uh, Patreon page. So short stories, knitting and art podcasting. Oh sorry, art and podcasting. So there we go. So that's uh, just AJ Nevins. Um, if you search for it on Patreon, or use the link that uh, we provided. If that's your jam, have a little check. So AJ, just as a little, just as a little tip there for you, um, as like a long-time Patreon user, um, the the locked post there, unless it's specifically um, kind of background information for you, kind of VIP members and um, you know your higher level kind of patrons, uh, I would, if you're creating stuff and you want to show it off, I would leave them. On unlocked posts, because um, these are the kind of things people are going to check when they come on. So they're, they're going to come and have a look at these kind of things, and they're going to kind of want to click them and see. Um, and then that's what they'll that that is how they will know that they want to come and support you, then and then um, can kind of back you. So yeah, just uh, even if you even if you leave these ones locked, I would post a few uh, just kind of like catalog posts, just show like the stickers and key change your. Um, I'll see if I saw then like new in the works, and recent works. These these kinds of things. Make sure there's some like images in there to kind of like you know to feed people and lure them in. Your siren song kind of thing. You know what I mean? That's what you need. dude finished right so down here now uh, when I'm doing the tatters it's um, sculptress mode on lazy mouse off high intensity small draw size and that allows me to kind of just gouge these little holes and nicks and cuts and scratches and all this kind of like tatty stuff and again you can, you can go crazy with this um, but there comes a point when it's a bit too much, and I did encounter it on um, a client piece I was supporting last night, um, where I possibly overdone it a little bit. I, I'd overdone it at the client's request. I hasten to add, um, I was making some zombies for them, uh, and yeah, no worries, no worries. Do you know what? If you if you're saying you're not great at stuff, what I would suggest, AJ, is um, do your Patreon as like a little journey to improvement. So while you set yourself your goals and your targets to kind of like develop your, uh, you know, whatever areas you want to develop on, kind of get people to come and join you on that. So show showcase your, uh, you know, your improvements and what you, 
you know, what steps you're taking and things like that. Because th these days, I think people kind of they want to buy into those kind of things. They want to kind of like follow follow somebody through, um, and you know, be on the little journeys with them. So again here we're just doing some um, some notches. But yeah, what I was saying, the uh, the ones I was doing for a client. I uh, I started doing supports for them. And I showcased the, the zombies in the first place and I showed them. They're happy with the zombies, they like them. Um, but they really like the old 1980s zombies from Games Workshop. Um, not really my thing. It's got a bit too much of an old school vibe. Um, but like, they really like the way they look. Kind of really rotted and you know, basically they wanted more like holes and like tatty texture and stuff all over the whole model. So I ended up having to go back in and do an extra pass of, you know, far more of this kind of stuff than I would ever normally put into any miniature. Um, and uh, it, it came and bit me in the ass when I was um, when I was doing supports for it because basically the supports are um, taking a beating. Basically, that they're, they're, they're everywhere. They're having to. You've got all these little islands that are created by the tatters. And it was it was a lot busier in terms of supports than I would have ideally liked. It managed it, it's printed alright, it's on my printer this morning. But again I can't show you guys because it's a secret project. I will just, I will name drop Coven, if uh, anybody knows what that is. I'm gonna call this Gast done. Let's just come back. No, I've done it again, haven't I? I've said I'm, I'm calling him done. He's not done. Let's just put a few little nicks and tatters in the bandages. Why, right, Jade? Just um. If you're still there, just be careful. Be careful. Be sure to go and post your uh, your Patreon link into the self promo thread. Mm, no, it wasn't, mate. It's, it's not. It's not them ones. Um, it's a. It's a whole. It's a whole new game. Um, they did do a Kickstarter with some terrain that I made for them, um, but they pulled the plug on the Kickstarter. Because basically, feedback from game uh, from the, the the game base was you're providing us with this game with a very unique setting and very unique um, what do you call it like visuals uh, a very unique aesthetic. Um, but you're only giving us six models, uh, which were sculpted by Matt Bickley. Very very nice models, but only six of them. And they were talking about factions where you needed like you know, ten to twenty models a side. Um, so yeah, the players kind of, or the, the the fans kind of went, well, we want more models. And they had been in discussions with me about it, and we started doing a few things. But the plan had always been that they would um, they would do the game first, garner interest in it and make sure it was something that people wanted before they sunk a ton of cash into a kind of completely new venture. 
um, which is fair enough, you know, you know, test the market and everything like that. So Kickstarter is a good way of doing it. Um, and yeah, unfortunately, um, I think they got to a point where they went, we've made a mistake. We should have come back. We should have done this with more models. Um, so I've been working very hard making the models you need to play the game. So I don't know at the moment if they're going to be available as STLs or just as physical miniatures. Um, not sure if they're 100% sure quite yet, but right, a few things to do. First thing is to do is save. Because if I don't, I'm going to regret that. Second thing is get my coffee open. Now I say open, I made it in a travel cup ages ago, about nine o'clock this morning. Um, and I left the lid on it, and it basically has been undrinkable for ages. Jesus, burnt my tongue off. So a two hour old cup of coffee is just like nearly taking the skin off my mouth. That's good. <laughs> right, so while I'm waiting for my coffee to cool down, let's do the uh, the bits I need to do. Okay, go one there. I'm gonna put another one there. And then I'll need over here. Right, I was going to put it in there, I think that was right. Two tied quite close together, so I can weave them together. And I need one here. Just uh, do groups and there's auto groups first. And just go Dynamesh. So that just gives me some usable topology. Uh, we're going to just take the move topological brush. Pull and move these things around a little bit. by the way, are pretty much ready to go into the store. Um, Haley did the renders for them last night, so they're ready to go into the um, into the store, onto my manufacturer of the products made. So as soon as they're on, I'll give you guys a heads up, we'll let you know. Um, and if anybody wants to order any of the uh, ghouls, they'll be up for set. Okay, 
Okay, so these bits I've just I've just done here now. I need to isolate them all. Okay, so when you come through with first pass will be um, the this brush. Just to do that. Again, this is the same bit of detailing I was doing on the other things before. So um, yeah, also um, I think I started mentioning it and then for whatever reason got sidetracked on it earlier. Um, so tomorrow's stream may or may not happen. Um, it might end up being a later on the evening kind of catch up type stream. Um, but basically we've got um, our internet being upgraded tomorrow. And the engineers are due to be coming between 8 o'clock in the morning and 1 o'clock in the afternoon. Which, you know, it's always helpful to have a really kind of like, you know, really close tight kind of, uh, you know, appointment window. Now, Hayley will be here for it, so I might have to duck out and do a little bit. Um, I might have to do a little bit of the appointment and speak to the engineers because she doesn't really know what's going on with it. Um, but basically they've got to cut down or trim a tree uh, that is directly across the road because the, the new fibre broadband is going to be coming through the uh, you know like the phone lines so apparently they've got to replace all of the phone lines in the country um, get everybody off the old copper network and onto the which is like you know something like 70 years old or something like that everybody's coming off the copper network and they're going to put everyone on fibre eventually um, but obviously to do that they've got to replace, like physically replace the cables that come into your house from the phone pole and unfortunately the telephone pole on our street that is like serving our house has this big ass oak tree um, that all of the wires pass through which obviously is clearly not ideal um, and they've got to trim the branches before they can actually get the the line through. I don't know how successful they're going to be tomorrow. I'm praying they don't completely nerf my internet by yeah, dropping a tree on the line or something. <laughs> so, um, I'm hoping it's going to be minor disruption while they do it and then there'll be a little bit of a switch over period. Um, but, uh, you know, you never know with these things, do you? When when you've got engineers involved, and so I'll I'll keep you I'll keep you posted on the Discord channel. I'll let you know what's going on as far as my um as far as I'm able. But like I say, if I, if I'm I might start in the morning and then end up having to like you know cut it off and um. resume later <clears throat> or I might just say I'll do a bit of client work in the morning and keep stuff offline and um, pick up later on with the with the stream yeah well we've got we've got the we've got fibre broadband already technically well we've got high speed broadband but it's through the ADSL <coughs> and it comes through the copper lines so our uh, our speed is limited to about 65 meg um, download speed <clears throat> and the upload speeds crap it's about 10 meg or something like that um, it's one of the reasons it's so painful loading products onto the website to be fair um, but the the new one uh, they've 
put in the um, like I say actual fiber connection so it's not it's not even in costing us anymore but if you're with uh, if you're with sky and you want to um, or even if you have any other internet provider if they're using the uh, copper cables you want to have a word with them because they've been they've been upgrading if you look at your phone line uh, the, the phone mast in the street there'll be a box at the top of the line um, if there's two boxes up there <coughs> The second box is your fibre box, so if you've got a second box at the top of the post, um, then you can get the fibre to your premises uh, using the, the phone lines. So if you're with like uh, BT Openreach or um, Sky or any of the other kind of, anyone that basically says you have to have a BT line essentially for, for the internet connection, anybody who's doing that. Have a word with them and try and get them to uh, do you the upgrade. Tell them you tell them you're not happy with your line speeds and whatever else, and see if they give you the free upgrade to the uh, what to the wireless because they've got <coughs> I think they've got like three years I think it was they said, and they've got to get everybody switched over. So they shouldn't be charging you for it or anything. They should be kind of biting your hand off to to do the upgrade really. So yeah, so I'll have slightly faster for speeds. I don't know. If, I don't know if you guys will notice the difference. Um, I'm hoping it makes a difference to the admin side of things on my like site maintenance. Because as you can imagine, every month I'm uploading quite a lot of stuff. Um, you know, we're doing a lot of a lot of file uploads, a lot of new products and stuff, and you know, loads of uh, having to upload to my manufacturer as well as to my own site. You're doing things twice over. My manufacturer is a God awful site at the best of times, um, but their their upload speeds are shocking. Um, No, I was rich. Fire the pictures over, ping them in the Discord, mate, and um, DM me if you want to. But I'll get that. Uh, I'll get the foal kind of made up for you, and have fun in your meeting. Okay, so one of the things you got to watch out when you're doing this uh, kind of work and you're using decimation, um, decimation, dynamic topology, the Sculptures mode. So uh, Sculptures Pro mode is going to um, start lagging. So you can see up here I've got 332,000 polys, uh, active points in this in this mesh. Once you hit around about a million, you're going to really start seeing uh, a drop off. In uh, how how smart the uh, or how responsive it is, I suppose is the best way of saying it. So you're going to really see uh, lagging going on, and there's no way to stop it other than trying to reduce your poly count down. So if you want to reduce your poly count down, the easiest thing to do is just isolate the save that before that happens again because that's the kind of thing that causes the crash yeah man I'm gonna be doing the uh, the Shetland for you that was the that's definitely the plan but you wanted the foal as well didn't you go on get off to your meeting we'll have a we'll have a chat about it offline later or later on in the chat mate <coughs> Yeah, so what you need to do is uh, basically if you're going to use your dynamic topology and you're starting to get laggy, um, what you want to do is just isolate the portion of mesh you're working on. So if you haven't got the actual um, mesh broken into poly groups that you can isolate, what you can do is if you're working on this area here, you can just do that and just like literally just mask off a few things. 
and it's only going to count here like instead of 330 odd thousand polys you're only looking at 87,000 now um, so it keeps it more manageable okay uh, so I'm going to save that dude because I'm happy with him uh, but I do need something for his foot to go on morning Chaz hope you keep him well sir okay so I need something here for his foot I'm tempted to go uh, for a rock I could do a tree a tree would be a bit different I could do a tombstone but no um, tree do a tree Okay, so I'm just going to bring that into there. I'm going to take my snake hook brush using dynamic topology again because it works best with this. I'm going to pull a little bit of okay, so I'm just going to go and break that off there, and I'm going to go for a bit of a gnarl the hell out of this uh, and make this nice and um, what's the word nice and gnarly um, and quite stick a skull in there as well just for because why not eh? So this is this is me sculpting a tree with no no reference, <coughs> and all I want is like a gnarly, twisted, mangled, like root type thing. Um, but sculpting it with no reference and without any texture. There's no alphas or anything being used. Um, this is just me. I'm going to be sculpting everything by hand. So it's all hand sculpted texture. But I, I like the way this looks, so it looks nice as a miniature. So I'll show you, I'll show you and uh, give you a couple of tips. Oops. Okay, so the first thing you want to do is get a rough shape in. Now that's a little bit too um, too straight for my liking, so I'm just going to take it there. I'm just going to. Rotate it around, stretch it back. I don't want it to come right the way to the other foot, but you know, you can kind of get away with a little bit more. Let's bring this back more here. I just want something that looks cool, you know what I mean? I'm not I'm not even fussed about real at this point. It's gonna be a very kind of a very stylized tree. Okay. And then we'll do a, let's put a root forwards and touch. Now these bits are the bits that are going to be contacting the ground, so you do want to make sure you've got a good, a good ground contact. Looks like some kind of creeps, doesn't it? It's got the look of a uh, some kind of caterpillar or something like that. Oh, speaking of caterpillars, actually, uh, it reminds me, we uh, took the kids to Strapped Up on Avon the weekend. Um, and went to the butterfly farm. So, if you're in the UK and you've never been to the Strapped Up butterfly farm, it's a very nice little day out. Um, not a whole day, but the guys there were telling us that um, anytime you see like anybody else in the country or you know other parts of the world even that have um, a butterfly collection. At like a zoo or something like that. Nine out of ten times they're getting their butterflies from the butterfly farm in Stratford. Because they breed them there and then they um they ship them out worldwide for like conservation projects and stuff. It was all very interesting. Saw some very cool uh, caterpillars that got my brain going and um You know, it's just it's just nice being surrounded by it, and it turns out butterflies love the, love my head apparently. 
because I had dozens of them keep landing on me. <clears throat> well, funnily enough, particular species as well. Right, so what I'm going to do now, so this is my rough form. I'm going to, um, this is like a, like a ridge line, so where you'd have like a knot in the wood kind of thing. So I'm going to do like a ridge where I'm going this way around, so strokes to kind of create this, this ridge. I'm going to do another one here as a, as a knot, but this one's got no branch in it. This is literally going to be a big knot in the tree. I don't want to take too much. I'm smoothing it out of touch, but I don't want to take all of the texture off. So you see, I've got these like little ridge lines from doing the from doing this sculpting. I want to kind of maintain some of that. Carving and such. Okay, now with the bark texture what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna do a little bit of this look so I'm just gonna I'm gonna go around the tree I'm gonna keep this like linear so you know what actually let me just undo a bit of that I'm going to smash the end of the tree here. So I want this to look, um, so this is like an offshoot branch and then this is the, the main stump of the tree. I want this bit to look like it was snapped off. Could have been cut off as well but I'm going to go for snapped at the moment. line around the outside of this root. Again, this is this is a kind of a DIY bark texture. So I'm kind of going in the direction that the the bark is going on the tree. The, the direction of growth. Obviously, you normally get the starations up the, uh, the side of the bark, going vertically up the tree, unless it's um, something like a birch or something like that, where it kind of goes around. But I want this one to be like a kind of a gnarly oak or sycamore or something like that. Sycamore off this kind of bark, does it? I can't even think now. Yeah, just remember not all trees are the same, so... So 
this is the rough block out phase, so if it's going to look crap, it's going to look crap right now. So now I need to do a bit of a polish pass. So I'm just going to do a, a dynamesh and a polish with a row. That's it. So I just want to smooth out some of the some of the stuff I've done. But you can still see I've got all the nice little ridge lines in. Uh, now I'm going to come in with the fairly high intensity, fairly low draw size, like I'm doing the uh, the cracks. But I want lazy mouse turned on for this, and I want to follow some of the contours here. I'm just going to kind of. So where I've got these, oops, where I've got these like lines here, so all of this patterning, all these marks I've got on the thing, I can use that as like an indication of what to do. And there's no rules to it, there's no rules to this bit, but I do want it to be kind of like quite Quite jaggedy, so not like a lot of jagged edges. Some flat bits, some kind of like short, some long, some kind of like H, <coughs> some H sections, some some like T's maybe. Um, have to join up either they can just end so and what I'll do at the end I'll just do another dynamesh pass uh, a little bit more resolution than the last time just like that and that will kind of like round it all out but that will give us a nice um, a nice surface texture to kind of imply wood, well, specifically tree bark. And it's nice, you don't need to be too precise and overthink this bit. The important thing is not to be too regular. You don't want like any repeating patterns, so don't try not to use a uh, Not to use too much of the same. It's quite easy to fall into a trap of having like a go-to, like you know, a bit of muscle memory kicks in and you end up doing the same thing over and over again. <clears throat> right now here we've got the the nut around. Okay. 
Okay, so let's do that and round off the edges. Oops. Right, now one of the things you'll find here, with, you can just kind of see with what I was doing then. So if I start here and I press down and then I drag up quickly, you can see it goes from a, a wider to a point. Like that. That's because lazy mouse is turned on. So if you're trying to achieve that look and it's not working, you want to kind of get that, that taper off, you need to use a quick stroke with lazy mouse active. Okay. If laser mouse isn't turned on, uh, actually, tell a lie. Okay, it does work without laser mouse, it's just easier with it. Actually, do you know what? <coughs> it's definitely. Yeah. The. Uh, the depth of the stroke varies less when you don't have laser mouse turned on. So you can get the taper, what you can't get is the uh, the shallowness at the tip. So it's more difficult to get it back to being a, like a proper gradiated run. I bet not doing the trees for the rest of the guests. We need to try and like do some time savings and economies here if I'm gonna get a few more finished. I'm gonna message my beautiful wife and let her know what I'm thinking about her. <laughs> See how she's doing.
So yeah, so whilst there is uh, a whole load of like brush alphas and tools and stuff you can use there that will stamp all of this kind of stuff onto your model, um, you are never going to be able to fill. Alright guys, let me, just, uh, let me just check my website again. Just messaged me about the uh, the website not working. He says it's working on his, but he just needs to uh, check. And I'm still getting my error, so which obviously is not great. It's not a great start to the uh, to the day having a broken website. Right, so remember what I said before about the uh, lagging up at a million polys? So we're up at 1.127 now and I'm noticing there's a delay between me drawing and the actual marks appearing on the screen. some point I'm going to need to possibly just isolate a chunk so I can work on it. It'll just stop working altogether, and it'll just, you'll just get an error saying you've exceeded your maximum poly count. I think that's like five million polys. But if you actually manage to get to five million polys, then it's going to be so laggy and painful. Then uh, you've either got the patience of a saint or you're a lunatic. Or both, perhaps.
So, back to my Oh man, all that detail I scored from was underneath the bloody tree. So yeah, there's another thing. I got so lost in the actual detailing part and just mechanically just doing the uh, the sculpting uh, that I spent a lot of time and effort doing something that's not even going to be seen. Genius. Now we also don't want to go below this line because this is the foot line. This is where the ground is going to cut it off. So I'm going to take the, um, the middle of this bit now and gouge it right down. Just a little spiral effect and then. Okay, there we go. So this is the point when you have that little moment of realisation that you are sculpting uh, a piece of anatomy from a female ant. Don't have a go because you're going to get splinters. Oh, 
Okay, so now I've I've taken this small piece of uh, tree. That is. Right, and what I've done is I've added so much topology to it in all these little lines that this small portion has now got to the nearly million poly mark. Um, I'm going to just have to quickly, I think. I'm going to quickly cut the bottom off, so I'm just going to group mask. Let's just delete the bottom there. And then we'll fill holes. Now when you fill holes on something like this, uh, I don't know if it's going to do it, but sometimes what happens is this bottom plate ends up overhanging. So you can just see here, the group, the colour is um, not ideal for it, but you can see it's, uh, it's because this is quite a concave um, curve, the base fill is less so. So what you want to do, if you ever do this, um, <coughs> so select the new base that you've done, make that your active tool, and then we're going to shrink it, oh hang on a sec, Cent come on, go home. Why is it picked up something else? Come on. Okay, right. So, take the center of it here. And I want to just shrink it down. Now, because I'm shrinking on the flat bottom plane, all it's doing is moving from the outside in. So, it's all good there. So, now I can... Um, all of those outside edges are the actual edges of the mesh where it should be. The better way of doing it, but I didn't want to dynamesh it yet, is to take the um, slice curve brush. We slice it all the way through the mesh, and then once you've sliced, um, you dynamesh with groups on, and it will separate the bottom group, the bottom slice from the top slice, and it will leave you a lovely sharp, clean line. So this one you can see is a little bit jagged still. So I am going to need to just clean that up a touch before the uh, very end. Okay, so I'm down to one and a half million polys now. So let's get this section of tree. Okay, we're on 83,000 in this bit, so much, much, much better. For now, Hmm. <laughs> Thank you. 
trees. Let's finish off quick. Getting bored of tree now. Kind of wishing I'd just gone with a rock. It's worth doing, it's worth doing right, isn't it? The way I always look at these is this stuff is like, you know, this is all my like legacy to anybody who sees any of this kind of stuff. It's all got my name attached to it. So I don't want anybody to like to see my work and kind of go, well oh, that was a bit crap. <laughs> Clearly wasn't interested in that bit, you know what I mean? You're only as good as the uh, as the worst piece in your collection. On. Thanks for the like, mate. Hope you're keeping well. Tattoo. Thank you for the follow, for the like. Hope you keep them out. Okay, so where are we at now? <coughs> Still need to do the busted up tree in this stumpy bit. I need to do a bit of bark on the branch there, and I've got a few of these little tree roots to get done still. So let's just texture these quick. Oops. is like very stylized so I'm not worried too much about it looking I don't want hyper realistic textures because you can't paint them anyway I am fully at the limit now of what um, what my dynamic topology can handle. <clears throat> I need to make sure um, I'm working on small mast areas. Just the offshoot branch to do now. <coughs> I 
So uh, I need to detail this bit out now. This is always a tricky bit when you're trying to do smashed trees. <coughs> it's quite a difficult. Let's just give it a little bit of gnarliness to start with. Oops. I'm going to go back to my freehand brush. Okay, we're going to do some uh, vertical stripes on any vertical surfaces we can see. And do some rings around in the tree, because that's what we would have. little draw brush. I want to pull a few bits off. Not too much. I don't want to overkill this. I want it to look like it was snapped, not just sawn off. Back to the. Right, let's just take my. Um, my car back from here. Any bits that are uh, behind the bark. There's a few vertical lines just carving down here just to give the impression of like split the grain. myself for this bit make it a bit easier
Okay, so let's save this. I'm going to do uh, Dino Mesh with a polish on there. There we go, it's got a nice smooth ish finish. And I'm just going to take the slice tool. I just want to take the very, very, very bottom off. Okay, so let's uh, group masked. No. Sorry, ignore me. Dynamesh and split groups. So I just want to take that. And you see it's got a nice flat bottom to it now. I'm going to delete the hidden bit, which is the bit we just took away. And now, it seems to flatten the bottom like a ghoul's foot, but let's just do that now, quick. Well, you can just see just a couple of dots of, uh, is that orange, is it? Or Okay, so there we go. Now, the one last thing I wanted to add was a skull. Because why not? How are you doing? Hope you're keeping well today, sir. Missed you today, mate. You looked anything nice? on the bottom of the gas's foot now. Uh, a little bit of grocery shopping. Well, here you go, just in time to see the end of this dude. <coughs> is the ghoul champion, the gas. Let's turn the colours off. <laughs> Fair enough, mate. All oh, Winter's Tales is going live on Twitch, uh, which means it's the... Um, what do you call it? I think it's the episode with the reveal on the sculpt I've done should be uh, an interesting one to see I'm just going to post a link in here for you. There 
There you go. Winter's Tales. So again, our latest, um, our latest partner. So they're a, a fast-growing D&D channel in Australia. So timings were a little bit out for me, uh, unfortunately, because well, they tend to be sleeping when we're awake and uh, obviously being on the other side of the world. But we've managed a, good, a couple of meetings, a couple of chats, and catch-ups, and whatever else. We've got little contracts in place. So you may see some some sculpts for the channel happening live, but. A lot of the stuff is going to be done as monsters for reveals um, in the like actual story, and when that's the case, I obviously can't show you that up front because it'll be a spoiler for them. So um, yeah, give them a watch anyway. Give them a little uh, a little follow. Right, so that's guest number one, Dawn. Or guest three, according to this one. Right, so guest two, what do I do with guest two? Or guest one, even. Right, I'm going to make that guest one because it makes sense, doesn't it? So. Cheers, mate. Let's say they're a, they're a small uh, they're a small channel at the moment. Um, they're growing organically quite quickly, so hopefully we can benefit each other a little bit, and I can uh, get the models made up for them, and we get their their mini range ready and uh, ready and launched. So. Okay, so second guest, I'm gonna go with Oops, not that. Cause that would be crazy. I say it's weird today. This is the first uh, first day in absolutely ages that it's just been me in the house. Haley's not here, the kids aren't here. Kids went back today, so today was the first uh, first day back. So we had them off yesterday. <clears throat> um, and yeah, they're uh, they're back today, and then schools are on strike tomorrow. So another day with uh, kids at home. And then of course it's World Book Day on Thursday, is it? I think so. It's the day when all the parents are dreading it, trying to figure out what the hell kind of book characters uh, they can rustle up a costume for at short to no notice. I think I spent more time making the log for that last gas than I went, spent making the rest of the actual model.
Excuse me. <laughs> we did the uh, oh, roll doll. We did Charlie and the Chocolate Factory last year because it was Jacob's favourite book. Um, and this year he's uh, amusingly decided that Roald Dahl is no longer his favourite author. He's read a lot more stuff since. Uh, and he's been reading these books called Undead Pets. Oh, mate, I've read about that. Even Rishi Sunak kicked off and said basically just leave it alone. Better to take it out of print than to faff with it and... Uh, and mess with it for the sake of political correctness. But have you seen what they've changed though? It's like ridiculous things, like all the references to like, you know when he describes characters as being grotesquely fat and whatever. They've removed all of that now. So there's no like, there's no talk of like fat kids, like Bruce Bogtrotter is just described, not Bruce Bogtrotter, what's his name? The little f German kid in the uh, Willy Wonka. So he's now just described as being enormous, which doesn't really kind of you know, doesn't give the same kind of like character feel, does it? And it's one of these things. It's like Roald Dahl is not a, a current author. Augustus Glute, that's his name. Yeah, he's not. He's not a current author. A lot of the stuff he wrote is <clears throat> is like past stuff. That is like you know it's, it's one of these things where it's like a sign of the times, isn't it? So you know if they if they do that now, this gives them carte blanche to go and do it to anyone. So like there was a kickoff worker about the tiger who came to tea being outdated and uh, showing I don't even know what the word is now, like old-fashioned like views of the family roles and stuff like that. But it was written in like the 1960s or something like that, so it was it's gonna it's gonna reflect the period in which it was written in. So you know you, you can't change history for you know just for the sake of it. Well, you can't change history full stop. It's but it's been it's happened. You're better off kind of just letting people know that's what it was like. <clears throat> Yeah, so Jacob wants to, uh, for, his, for his World Book Day costume this year, we said to him, what do you want to dress up as? And we basically said, do you want to do, do you want to wear your Willy Wonka costume again? No, I don't want to wear Willy Wonka, it's not my favourite uh, favorite story anymore. What is? Oh, there's a character called Dumpling in um, Undead Pets. And he's a, he's a zombie hamster, and I'm like, mate, how the hell... Am I supposed to dress you as a zombie hamster for World Book Day? So we we uh, we compromise with well, so we compromise with him. We talked talked him round in the end, and he's gone for a, a David Williams book called Billionaire Boy. Largely because we found a, uh, a a ready to go costume for a fiver online. <laughs> so as much as I'd have loved to help him dress as his uh, undead hamster. I just haven't got the time to to dedicate to that kind of like level of cosplay that would be required for that to happen, do you know what I mean? So unfortunately it's not to be this year. But fair play to me for thinking outside the box and uh, being a bit different.
Oh mate, if I could if I could actually get in there and um, make his uh, zombie costume, imagine like just taking him into school as a giant furry zombie hamster. I say furry. This makes me laugh though. That was his that was his go to his go to thing. You know what I mean? Bit nuts, really, isn't it? But that's my boy, I suppose. He is crazy like that. Oh, and I think he's some kind of like gaming savant as well, because like he's been playing through what well, we've been playing through. I think I mentioned on previous streams, like we've been playing through Breath of the Wild, um, the Zelda game on the Switch. So one of the main reasons we've been playing through the game is because the new one, um, Tears of the Kingdom, is coming out soon, um, and he's been so eagerly anticipating it since he he's already completed Zelda one, so he's seven. He's completed Zelda one, he's completely on his own. So now we're doing a, a second playthrough with all the DLC stuff from scratch. Um, <clears throat> Cause he wants to get like 100% game uh, completion on the game before, Breath of the, uh, before Tears of the Kingdom comes out. So I'm there sitting thinking, nah, he's not gonna get 100% on that. Um, and now I'm thinking he actually is. <laughs> he's, doing, he's doing particularly well with it. So he's got, um, there's all the shrines in the game where you kind of you do your shrines and you get uh, you get like lev uh, not level up you get these orbs that kind of help you to level up so you cash in four orbs for either additional stamina or um, what do you call it now additional uh, hearts so it makes you tougher to kill or whatever and um, He's now completed all of the shrines, um, and he's gone onto the DLC ones where you have to fight more difficult versions of the bosses that you've had to fight already. So last night he sat there and he played through, well I say last night, yesterday afternoon, he sat and played through three shrines, like literally back to back without any um, kind of hesitation. And he's like, Dad, I've done that one now, I've done that one. I've finished the, uh, I've, beat the, I've beat the mini boss I've got to do to, to get it. And all this stuff I thought was going to be really difficult, but clearly not for him. Um, and <clears throat> he's gone and beat, the, uh, beat all these bosses, gets all his, uh, his shrines activated, and then has to go and fight this like other boss. And then the boss comes up and he's like, oh, I've got one weapon. Um, a, f a bow and a few arrows, uh, and that's that's pretty much it. And I'm sitting there thinking, God, he's never going to do this. It's like going to be well difficult. They've, they've made they've made the they've amped the difficulty up on this boss massively by giving you a limited selection of tools to use to fight it. And then a couple of minutes later, he's like, All right, he's dead. On to the next one. I'm like, what? It's like, how 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 have you just like you know, how have you just done that boss that fast? Like without even batting an eyelid, pretty much. He, he wasn't even, he wasn't scared about going into it. There was no nervousness or anything like that. He was just like, right, I'm going to do this now. And he, he went in and he did it. And that was it. And um, frankly, I'm amazed because I fought these bosses in the game with him. Uh, and it's taken me multiple attempts where I've ended up dying a couple of times. He, he hasn't died once. He, he just batted it. <laughs> he just went straight in.
fun, mate. They are, aren't they? It's like they've grown up with these kind of games, and it's like it's just second nature to them now. So, this is the last of the uh, the last few models for the uh, this month's mini collection. However, starting maybe tomorrow, I'm going to be doing my uh, my guards. Or City Watch again. Uh, and City Watch for this next round, as we know, Bunker, is going to feature some of my favourite people um, as likenesses. So we're going to have a Bunker in the watch. Now, am I correct in saying, Bunker, we said we were going to do you as a, as a gnome with a... A rabbit worm, if I remember right. Is that right? Yeah, definitely possible, mate. I love the idea. So our friend Bunker is going to be a a gnomish city guard with a um, an attack rabbit on a lead. <laughs>
get these tatty bits in. So I'm just a little bit distracted here. The uh, winter tales are starting. I'm watching it silently while I'm sculpting. Um, and they're doing all the, the, the sponsor shout outs and stuff. So I'm on, I'm on screen at the moment and they're, uh, they're all singing my praises, which is nice. Or I assume they are. They're they all look happy and impressed and uh, and whatnot. So Bunker, actually, mate, can you do us a favour? Can you have a little look on my website and see if it's uh, if it's working okay for you again? I've been looking at it in Chrome, so I don't know if I don't know if you're using Chrome or if you're using something else, but. No, I should try that actually. See if I click the link, do I get it? Uh, I'm still getting it, man. I'm still getting, I'm still getting privacy error here. Every time I click it, it comes up the HTTPS as an issue. So I've asked Andy to have a look at it anyway. So we'll, have, we'll see if we'll see if he uh, if he gets anything. I'm glad it's not everybody that's uh, failing to get on there. That really stuff me up if nobody can put an order in.
So I'm just tying up the, the bottoms of this loincloth skirt thing so it's a bit more raggedy. Uh, and I'm going to come in with my orb crack, uh, boost up that intensity, crack the size down a touch. Well, that, that is good to know, thanks Monka. Just uh just try something with this guy say. Give it a quick save. Oof. So I've got his hands now. I'm going to turn his hands up a touch more. And now I want to just get his feet. I want to invert them. Actually, the feet aren't flat anyway, are they? No, let's, let's straighten the feet up first. Isolate the feet. Invert. And then I want to lean the whole thing forwards. The 
Looks like he's uh, doing a Stevie Wonder, doesn't he? With the little piano fingers. <laughs> Lane 41, thank you for the follow. <clears throat> okay, so right, I do just grab a sandwich, you know. Before I start faffing around trying to straighten this dude's fingers out, so I can um, place his hands flat on the floor. What's that? Fist's not good, right now. The fist like a gorilla kind of pose, or. Save this, I'm going to put you on a BRB. I'm going to go grab a sandwich. I've got some coronation chicken in the fridge, which is calling my name out. So I'm just going to pop you on a BRB screen. Um, there you go. So if you look up a little bit there, you've got the uh, things. Let's get the discount code up for you all. There you go. Discount code is live for you. Um, so if you want to go and uh, have a little browse my wares on the lionstower.com, well, I'll just go and grab a sandwich uh, and then I'll be back to you guys shortly. Okay? Right, I shan't be long. I'll be eating while I'm back here anyway, so I'm just going to go and make the sandwich. I'm, Hayley's not in the house to try and distract me with anything today, so um, it should be a nice quick quick out and return but you've got to, you've probably got about 10 minutes of shopping time so uh, fill your basket quick <laughs> all right cheers guys I'll see you shortly
Oh, so I forgot nothing. I mean, the email, the email address will be dan at ltminis.com. It's like the standard. Yeah. Um, <coughs> I'm not sure what the password is for GoDaddy. Is the only problem? Let me just try and log in now. Sign out and then sign back in again. Oh, I think I've signed in through Facebook, mate. Yeah, I went in through bloody Facebook. What do we need to check? I can check it while uh, you can talk me through if you want, and I'll check it while I'm on here. Uh, I don't, I don't know where the where their DNS is. What, I've got a managed DNS on know, the Lions Tower. Is that it? If you go, if you go to it, take and it show it will show you all the DNS and what your values are in it. If you go to it, just take a screen grab of it and send me it. Okay, so Yeah, same about the HTTP. I noticed it. I, I went to a. I took the kids to Bad Isle Clinton on Saturday, I think it yeah. was. And I, I tried to log on on Saturday while I was out there because I, I basically I'd set somebody up on, on the affiliates now. Um, <clears throat> and the the affiliate program's live, but for some reason when I set um, set him up, I'd forgotten to allocate him to a tier, so he didn't actually have any kind of commission showing. So he was, just, he was just asking about that, but just got to try and. Uh, I tried to. I don't know what he's doing. I, can't, I literally can't even log on on my uh, on my computer unless I go through the back end. Have you dropped Shopify? Is a contact Shopify. They have a uh, uh, a chat yeah. thing. If you just drop it, just <coughs> drop the. Uh, <coughs> photo you took, just send yeah. that, that to them and say, I'm trying to log on, why am I getting this? Yeah. Because I've just looked at your DNS and it looks okay to me. Is there anything, the, the certificates is, uh, is would, could it be that or? It could be, but you, uh, what do you call it, gets one anyway, you know, because it's a hosted platform for uh, Shopify, yeah. it has a, uh, a, a, a thing you stick it anyway. That's why it's HTTPS on the uh, on the URL when you go there. Because when I'm when I'm logging when I'm trying to go to the website, the HTTPS is crossed out. Well, it should have a. It, right. Well, that's that will be the issue. <clears throat> but it should have it. Yeah. Lion Tower. It just. It just go and look at the Lion Tower. I'm not even there. That's but that's LT Minis. I can get there on LT Minis, and that's all fine. The LT Mini is a different website, though, isn't it? That's not it's the, the old one, isn't it? Yeah, that's the yeah, one that's yeah. got to be redirected. It's the lionstower.com we're uh, trying to get to. Yeah. But whenever I go to it, I, it's just <clears throat> I'm getting a thing. But people have uh, like bunker on my um, on my uh, what you call it uh, stream. Guy called uh, guy called the bunker. He checked yeah. it for me, <clears throat> and he went on. Um, Mine goes straight through, and it and I get a. Well, he he did he did, and then it started it started uh, dropping out. Now he's getting the uh, the same error that I'm getting. I get connections secure. What's he fucking playing at? <laughs> That's what I I would just drop uh, Shopify a message and just 
pissed off them because they, he, he's going to their hosting. I get it's a, I mean, everything is secure for me. Where, where are they? Do you know where these people are based? Are they based in the UK? Yeah, Ian's Ian's UK based. <clears throat> um, but it's, it's it's something I've noticed myself rather than something that somebody's reported into me. Yeah, you know what I mean, I get, so no, uh, nobody's complaining. Some, I mean, somebody from the Netherlands was buying stuff over the last couple of days. So, yeah, I, I, I go there. There's no issue. I've just done a yeah. hard refresh as well, and I get no issue with that at all. Um, how do I get to Shopify? Help. Uh, if you just log out, put Shopify.com. Yeah. You should be able to get to it. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Shopify anyway, helps. I got that. But, yeah, yeah. <clears throat> <clears throat> so, um, contact Shopify support. There we go. Yeah. All right, I'll give that one a go. Yeah, if you got if you got anything else you yeah, want for the uh, gangs of Rome, mate. Like I say, I've got a round fountain, uh, Roman style, and a raised wooden platform to do for Mark. That was don't the worry, two containers. Don't, don't do both of those at the minute. No. Uh, no, no, because they, we can cover those with Sarissa for now. Yeah. Uh, what I need is scattering bits, you know, like uh, sacks. Yeah, yeah. And, but a group of sacks, not just a sack, you know. A group of <coughs> about four, a group of, you know, like how they uh, bail up material into yeah. a square bale, that yeah. kind of stuff. Just lots of that kind of thing that people can go behind, or they can drop, or they can throw. That stuff is invaluable. You want like pile, piles of sticks and barrels and yeah, wood, piles of wood. You yeah. know, stuff that you can we can put around the tabletop, and uh, it's not going to take up loads of room. Oh, uh, piles of uh, you know the tiles, the pan tiles that you see on top of Roman buildings. Oh, like, like yeah, roof tiles, yeah, those. yeah. Roof tiles, yeah, it's a stack of roof tiles. You know. Yeah, yeah. Uh, all of that kind of stuff would be brilliant. Do I need like scaffolding platforms or anything like that? You know, like little, uh, like little wooden stick towers or anything. I will do. I will do. At the minute, uh, you know, Sarissa are doing a bunch of it. All oh, right, they're doing it. Uh, <clears throat> well, they're doing it with their MDF kits. Yeah. So, but going forwards, we'd like to do loads of bits like that. Yeah. So people can just buy scaffolding and do it. So we will come back for that definitely. Yeah. yeah. But uh, things like uh, grain, you know, sacks of grain. Yeah. You know, but but the part, you know, and, and also piles of grain that you could put into a into a warehouse. Yeah. yeah. That's all of that stuff is the stuff we need, you know, because they've got all of those quite clinical buildings, but yeah. they're just models. Yeah, yeah. Uh, you want the stuff that's going to flavour it. The, the stuff that you hide behind, or you throw, or you chuck, you know, and your market stalls. Your market stalls are way better. Yeah. Well, I've only done two market stalls. Is that enough for you, or do you want more? Uh, I'd speak, again, I'd speak to Mark, mm. because obviously I'm spending Mark's money, not, <laughs> not mine. <laughs> but as a, as a, if it was, you're asking me for priority, yeah. A set of ganger bases, <clears throat> one to ten. Yeah, yeah. With the uh, with the puddle out and without the puddle out, and all of that kind of scattery bits, they would be my priority. Right, well, I'll tell you what. If, if Mark's if Mark's the money man on this, do you want to have a have a chat with him about what you what you need and get him I'll to? Ask, I'll ask about the other. I'll ask about the other bits. Yeah. Get, get him to bits, get him to put the order in. I, will, I can okay. I can expedite well, all of the these other, and I, get them done I will, for you. I will order those bases now. Yeah. You know, all of those, those that one to ten bases, yeah, you know, yeah. uh, with the puddle and stuff, I'll, I'll order that now. And those bases you've done, but there's space for a puddle and stuff, yeah, yeah. definitely. He'll go with that, but I'll ask him what he wants made. Okay. But, and that scatter as well. Yeah. Definitely order all of that. That's all the deal, uh, you know, definite, definite go. Oh, yeah. um, but the the fountains and the scaffolding and all of that, and the, the market stalls, I'll have a chat with him and see what he wants done. Yeah, because I say he, he just said market stalls before, and I did I did the two of them. Um, they're they're designed so that they're they're clear on the top, um, yeah. so you can kind of put whatever you want on there. And I've just gone for like just bowls and vases and things. But if you want yeah, any no, if you want anything dates, specific on them, you know dates, <clears throat> food, 
yeah. um, carpets, you know, all of that kind of stuff. I didn't think about things like that. Yeah. Tell you what else would be really good. I'll get George to measure it. A piece that we can use 25 mil long mm. that will sit on top of a sloped roof that we can put down and stick a miniature on. Oh, yeah, yeah. So the miniature can run across the roof. Yeah, it's like a little, uh, a little dolly to stand them on. Yeah, like, like a little standy thing, yeah. yeah, just to stand them on. But I don't know what the incline of the roof is. <clears throat> well, if they're all the, if, if the roof incline's all the same, you know, get George to measure the... Um, I will do, yeah. The height yeah, of it, yeah. and I'll, I'll try... And, yeah. I'll try and, I'll try and, I'll try my best to make you a wedge that fits. <clears throat> yeah. It, sh it shouldn't take too long, anyway. It'll only take, it's only a couple of minutes worth, though, but... Oh, wait a minute. Uh, is that is that help? Uh, yes. So de you know, definitely. You know, if we will, the stuff you've done, and those bases, and the bases without the puddle, and the bases with the Roman numbers. Yeah. If I can have them ASAP. That would be massive. Yeah, I'll get them for you. I'll try uh, and get them. I'll try and get them all wrapped up for you this week and sent over. Um, and, and just a heads up, I do. About a list for a bit, all right. Well, I need to. I need to give Mark a heads up as well. Um, I've got test prints done of the cultist school, uh, cultists, fishmen, zombies, uh, millenites, and mm -hmm. I've got to get the nav swarm redone because he, he asked me to tweak it and change it. So I've, I've tweaked that. Uh, I need to get the resculpt yeah. done on that, which I'll do later today. Um, and then I need to do the supports for Bork and um, the navs and get them done. But pretty much. Almost everything for the uh, coven stuff now that's on my plate is ready to rock. You're making very happy man. <laughs> well, I'll give, him, I'll give him a call after I've done my stream and let him know anyway. But Brilliant. Well, I'll call him now. <coughs> yeah. I'll just say uh, we've had a conversation about uh, stuff for uh, for Gangs of Riot yeah. uh, going forward. So this is, you know, the stuff I'm all spying. I've halted the other bits. We'll come back with those. Yeah. Bit. All right, mate. Lovely stuff. Easy peasy. All right then, cracking. All right, I'll leave you to you. Yeah. I'll leave no you to you later. All right, uh, take it easy. Let me know what Shopify. Let me know what Shopify say though. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, we'll do, mate. We'll do. And uh, we'll get it fixed. All right, lovely. All right, cheers, Dave. Brilliant. Catch you right, later. Mate, take it easy. Have a good day, mate. Bye. Man. Bye, 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 bye. <laughs> Oops. Okay, let's just pretend you didn't hear any of the uh, Gangs of Rome chat that's just been going on, okay? <laughs> no, it's all good. I was going to come back and tell you guys about it anyway. Um, <clears throat> but yeah, the, uh, the website's not working. Um, at the moment still, so I'm going to try and send off some support from Shopify. Uh, <laughs> the uh, Gangs of Rome, as you just heard, um, if you haven't seen it already, uh, it's uh, it's already live. Hey Rosie, how you doing mate? So, uh, it is already live with um, Footsaw Miniatures. <laughs> Yeah, that's one of these ones where I've just forgotten to turn the microphone off again. Um, I was having a chat to Andy up in the house because he's giving me the uh, assistance trying to get the website running again. Um, <clears throat> everything we've checked is fine, so we think it's a Shopify issue, so I've got to refer that on. Um, but while we're chatting, uh, I've got some Gangs of Rome and uh, other bits and bobs for them that I need to get through. Uh, so Gangs of Rome is going live on Kickstarter very shortly. So if you haven't seen Gangs of Rome, you don't know what it is. Uh, it's halfway between Mordheim, Plebs, and uh, <laughs> Mordheim, Plebs, and Spartacus. So yeah, mum's the word, mate. Mum's the word, Rosie. <laughs> So yeah, Mordheim, Plebs and uh, Spartacus, and if that kind of you know floats your boat, have a little look for Gangs of Rome. So you can get it already on um, the Footsaw website, they are selling the models, they've, they've, they've done it already, it's a 
you know, an existing game. Um, but it is going back to Kickstarter for version 2, where I've got some new mechanics going in. So uh, I've got some sculpts I've got to get done for um, for that for them. Uh, and then we've got also... Um, what do we call it? <laughs> uh, I know, mate. Do you know what? I had my um, I had my watch call it screen over the top of Streamlabs, so I didn't see it. Sorry. But thank you for looking out for me again. <laughs> <clears throat> Luckily, nothing confidential, so it's all good. Um. So yeah, I've got to try and get this sorted uh, and get it all up and running now. Um. But first, let's get on with the sculpt. Where have I put the glove? There it is. <coughs> I'm just crap at this, aren't I? I'll learn one day, Bunker. Okay, so. <laughs> Second time I've left the microphone on and uh, had a meeting. <laughs> <laughs> There's me being dumbass, I didn't even spot the joke. Alright, here we go. So, we're going to call this guy done pose wise. I'm going to give him a bit more. Um, let's give him some hair, I think. <laughs> let's do as I say, not do as I do, eh? You guys still Minecrafting, are you then? How careful do you need to be on Minecraft, eh? purpose or uh, accident. Me and Jake can play Minecraft sometimes, but um, what we tend to do is we tend to make a kind of a, a base in creative mode and then switch over to, um, what do you call it, what, survival mode and, and actually play in it. The problem is then, everything just gets blown, everything just gets blown up by the uh, creepers, doesn't it? So we end up having to try and like, figure out all the, the defences and things. I keep getting like endermen spawning like right by the uh, right by our starting point every single time we play the game lately. And I don't know why. That's it. I'll tell you the best one we had though. So my uh, my nipper decides he's going to build this massive great big treehouse, and he liked the aesthetic of everything being wood, so we built everything in wood. And then we started playing the game, and like I say, creepers came and blew up half of this like treehouse and annihilated the tree, and you know it became a bit of a mess. You know they they really kind of made a mess of everything. <clears throat> and then uh, he decides he's going to put a little lava uh, trench around the outside, so he builds this massive great big lava trench. Um, God, that's gone loud. So yeah, he builds a massive lava trench around the outside and then accidentally drops a big block of lava on the tree that we're using as the treehouse base. So the whole treehouse starts going up in flames. And he starts screaming and panicking, asking me to get water and stuff, and starts going into like a, a mad frenzy. And I'm just chuckling my head off, like, you know, thinking it's hilarious. And he's going, uh, he's going, I thought he'd hurt himself originally. I thought he'd, I thought he'd like caught his leg or something. Um, and then it turns out he was just being daft with his uh, 
these lava lava pit in the treehouse. Yeah, we made the whole treehouse out of wood, so we we basically made like a giant tree. So we we did the uh, we found a giant tree to start with, and then we kind of built into it a bit more. So we made this huge, great big tree kind of like base, if you like. And then we built the house up in the top of the tree, but we kind of wove it in. Um, and it was like it's like an Ewok thing. You know what I mean, it was like there was like platforms, there was like little nooks and holes and rooms and caves and all this kind of stuff in there. It was really cool. And then he set fire to it like a plonker. And then the best thing was when it came to actually <laughs> when it came to actually addressing it um, and putting the fire out. Uh, he used water buckets and set fire to the, uh, sorry, then flooded the entire house to try and, um, obviously putting water sources down, they just keep spawning, don't they? So we ended up with like a waterfall pouring out of the house. The whole thing ended up kind of half burnt down, half flooded out, and then we were just like, yeah, that's just, let's just leave this one and go somewhere else and do it again. <laughs> so. Ah, fire tick. Didn't even think of doing that. Too much hair here, isn't it? This is too this is too full of head of hair, so I need to kind of come back and address this. So you gotta do all the machines and stuff. <clears throat> It does, mate. It still burns. That that treehouse is still on fire. We've uh, still well, there's still fire on it. We gave up trying to put it all out. This when you went, you went help, help, dad, dad, help, help, help. And I thought, oh my god, what's he done? Is he caught his foot? Well, what you done? He's like, I put lava in the wooden house. It's like you prat. <laughs> You guys play Minecraft with Dodge or uh, the Alona? We tried to do a, uh, a drawbridge with uh, redstone the other week, <coughs> using like sticky pistons and like slime blocks, and God, it was hard work. Couldn't get it to work at all. I like. He has these ideas. We end up having to go onto YouTube and get tutorials how to do stuff, and I still struggle to follow them, like, even if I've got a tutorial. <clears throat> do you guys build together or do you like do you go on the attack and destroy each other's stuff <laughs> so I can kind of I can kind of imagine you guys being competitive in this respect and kind of going on the offensive <laughs> yeah, Jacob's latest thing on Minecraft. He likes to, he likes to go into a flat world that's got like nothing in it, 
and just make random objects. It's like he, he made a, uh, a Nintendo Switch controller the other day because he could look at it and he was making it and then tried to make a pot of tulux paint uh, and he's doing like 3D versions of 2D pixel art for... <laughs> Don't forget, you got to flood it. Oh, he does the same with cats. Have you tried making snowmen yet? Have you made, have you made the snowmen turrets? They're quite fun. So Jacob's favourite one, he, he'll get uh, he'll get the creatures on a lead, build a fence in the sky, and then tie the leads to the fence. So he has a load of dangling animals. Oh yeah, I saw the camels up there. Yeah, have you not done the snowmen before? So you know when you make a golem, uh, you have two blocks of iron, is it? And then you put a pumpkin on the top. So you basically get, you need to build an enclosure for them. So you basically build like a little, a little retainer wall with a little lid on the top or you can put a fence around them um, build a few around the outside of your uh, your house uh, and then you put two snow blocks down and top it with a pumpkin and it becomes uh, an aggressive snowman who throws fireballs uh, fireballs throws snowballs at, your, at the enemies that come nearby um, and if you use the shears and you take the shears to it it becomes a less aggressive snowman but the thing is, if you don't um, if you don't contain them, they just wander around everywhere. But containing them, you can basically just have like a little turret defence. So, you know, if you've got like a path cut or a bridge or something coming up to your house, slap a few snowmen and they'll run up to it and any enemies come up there, we're going to get snowballed to death. And obviously the golems as well, you throw a few golems in there, so any that get past the snowballs are going to get you know, finished off by the golems protect yourself. The only thing is occasionally the uh, the, the snowmen do get killed by um, enemies that have got like a ranged attack like your skeletons and stuff. So you have to like re replenish them. So I'm sure you could build a snowman dispenser. Drop out the uh, drop out a couple of um, snow blocks and then chuck a pumpkin on top of it. <laughs> oh the snow snowman should be a staple in any of your uh, any of your builds really. Especially if you're doing like creative mode. Probably less so if you're not doing creative to be honest because it's gonna be harder to get hold of all the uh, all the blocks and stuff but Take this bit of hair away here. <laughs> Make sure you post uh, photographs in the uh, in the chat. I'll um I'll set up a little Minecraft uh, Minecraft page on there. A little Minecraft uh, group. In fact, actually, you know what? I'll just make you two admins and you can see it on yourself. Hey, here, Alston. How you doing, mate? Yeah, we get bored in creative mode. We do, we do a little bit in creative and then we turn it into survival. But we end up getting battered in survival mode because... Well, because we're crap at the game, I think. <laughs> I'm more interested in building stuff that looks nice than... Uh, so I did a nice, I, I did a nice house that I carved into the side of the rocks. So you found a cliff that went into water. <clears throat> yeah, found found a cliff that went on uh, on the side of a, a lake that was kind of going out into the sea, and uh, I dug down, put a load of uh, glass walls and stuff, so you could see out into the sea underneath. 
populate it with all these tropical fish, and then we realised there was a few little lava blocks under the uh, water, um, and the whole all my, all my tropical fish got fried. <coughs> so it's supposed to be like a big glorified aquarium, and it never worked. Yeah, Jacob keeps watching this guy on YouTube called Charlie Custard Builds. And that fills him with uh, ideas then. But the stuff that guy makes, I mean, it's, it's crazy, you know what I mean? You need weeks of it. <laughs> Who are you wanting to punch, Elston? You know you're going to be re-immortalised as a, a lone guard, a lone uh, city watch. Uh, in the next week or so, mate. That'll be something for you to look forward to. You know what? I might do you as a little scrappy, uh, scrappy halfling again. <clears throat> a little scrappy gnome. So I'm gonna have, I'm gonna have um, bunker as a as a gnome with a, uh, a an attack rabbit on a lead. So I'll do you as a little punch in your own fist or something like that. You could be a little scrappy, uh, little scrappy gnome. If I could do, if I could, if I could physically do a monologue, I'd love to do one with you, kind of arguing with your your narrator. <clears throat> oh yeah, Rosie, if you if you can send me a few photos over whenever you get a chance, mate. So I'll be starting this week. So I need to update the uh, base mesh, and I just need to know whether you want like crossbow, whether you want a, a truncheon, a spear. You know what kind of what kind of equipment we're giving you, and then if you want to be anything other than uh, other than human. Honestly, mate, I was just going to do you as a as a kind of a, a, a city watch guard, but I want to kind of give everyone like a personality and kind of something a little bit different, so you're not just generic guards. You know, the, the, these will be characters that you can use to give a little little plot hook or you know a little twist of sorts to your your players. <clears throat> Yeah, it's going to be a bit hard, isn't it? Mon monitoring, uh, modelling a um, an imaginary, uh, an imaginary friend.
Okay, so I've got one piano playing Gast. Um, do I want to give him some uh, bandages or wraps around his hands or. I don't want to leave the rats and stuff off this guy in the spirit of getting them done quick. Not sure it's going to particularly add a lot to him to add them. Potentially busy him up a bit too much. I might do the next one with a, a bit of arm. Oh, actually, I might give him a bit of arm, actually. Cheers, mate. I won't put them up on stream just in case. And full on cosplay as well, mate. Fair play. <clears throat> Are you just going to be a human um, guardsman, or do you want to be uh, anything in particular? Or It's more the face than anything else. Just, just get the uh, get the face right.
Yeah, Rosie, so basically what we're doing, uh, I want to try and give all the characters like a bit of personality, rather than just being generic guardsmen. So I've got um, Bunker's going to be a, a gnome with a uh, attack rabbit. Uh, Rich is going to be a halfling um, on a, a pony. Uh, no, a Shetland pony. Um, Elston's going to be a, a gnome brawler. As a guard, obviously. Uh, I've got somebody else who's going to be a human archer. Or marksman or whatever. Uh, Nerd Harla, I think, was doing... I can't remember. I'd have to, I'd have to check the conversation with Nerd Harla and see what we're doing there. But... <clears throat> um, yeah, did you have any kind of preference to... Do you want to be anything other than human, or is human okay for you? Okay, so you're, you're, you're the baton wielder then, who's going to be going into the... Uh, into the taverns, putting the drunks in the cart. Oh, that'd be a good one, wouldn't it? Oh, I should make you. A, I should. I should do you the. Uh, you should be maintenance on cart, shouldn't you? <laughs> Changing the wheels and stuff. Seam lines corrected where the geometry is going to be squiff. <laughs> okay, so I'll give you how about if I do you as a uh, I'll do you as a um like a, a sergeant or a captain. You could be uh, kicking a grease monkey who's going to be doing the uh, changing the wheel on a cart then. Well, that could be quite a cool one.
<laughs> Dog could be pulling the cart. doing a really kind of like over the top look marks into the model it could well because the lazy mouse is off so it's worth checking before you start kicking off about anything else it's uh it's usually the culprit although sometimes i find with uh, what i have noticed and i don't know if anyone else has this but um yeah no one's raising Thank you very much. You take it easy. We'll catch you again soon. Yeah, well, I've definitely noticed that Photoshop interferes with the sensitivity on the, um, the pressure sensitivity on the uh, ZBrush. I think like it literally doesn't work at all. Whilst the uh, trick for you.
Hey Nathana, how you doing? Thank you very much, and there's the other one. I might just stick to two ghasts. They're burning me out. Oh dear, let's get the hair on. Nice down. How are you today anyway? You keeping well? streaming for hours but I'm um, still definitely lagging I say I'm experiencing some website issues as well at the moment so I've got to kind of get on that and get that sorted which is going to be fun hopefully Shopify are nice and prompt in responding to me Raylock OC, thank you for the follow. Hope you're keeping well. <clears throat> okay, so. There's all of our goals so far. Let me just paste a ghast into there. number two So I printed all of these guys apart from the two ghasts um, the other day actually, and they've all come out pretty nice. So I'm quite, I'm quite pleased with the overall, the overall look of them. Although I did, I did say earlier on actually there was one little thing I was not keen on that I was not happy with, and that is that one of these guys ends up on a bigger base because I've basically outstretched him. Um, so let me just grab my alternative camera and I'll show you what I'm talking about. So if I go to my secondary camera view, is it even plugged in? It's not even plugged in. Oh, that's right. I was, sorry, I had, to, I had to unplug it to get my... Uh, No, it's not having it, is it? Let's try this 
one. No, I'm still not working. Right. Why is it picking up logic capture? There we go. Oh, come on. Let's at least go full size with it. Okay, so. This is absolutely terrible, isn't it? This is not a uh, not a good view. But you see what I'm saying here? Like the they all printed beautifully. I'm loving this one here with the uh Can I is this gonna focus and zoom in or what? I tell you what, let me load logic capture because I can actually manually zoom the bloody thing then. Disable the camera here. Let's turn that to. Ah, so the secondary one's working now. Right, so that's showing you the side of a book. Right, this has gone massive, so let me just shrink this back down. So the picture's a little bit crappy, the uh, quality's not amazing on it, but you can see this guy here really annoyed me that I'd spanned out his uh, pose a little bit too much. But they've all worked out quite nice. They're, um, they're uh, <coughs> certainly looking the part. So, next thing I need to do with these is get the, the last two these last two guys uh, made up get them printed and then I just need to adjust that last dude's pose so while I'm here what I'm going to do is um, to here what I need to do is take his leg or maybe just his hand I'm not sure Maybe it's easier to do with his arm, but ah, you knacker.
so let's get a little bit of <coughs> a bit of reworking into the anatomy at the top of the shoulder. get this hopefully that now should fit so I'll just um, bring this base down can live with that he's he's right on the limits of the base but he's on the base so that's cool with me I can move that to the side he now needs to be redone on the export so let's just hide all of the other ghouls so ghoul 2 needs a dynamesh and then he needs a actually let's, let's screw that up then he needs dynameshing and then he needs uh, pre-processing and decimating so we'll get this one ready to go so I'll do these as individuals I think I'll do gast 1 and gast 2 should they have names do you think or should they just be gast 1 and gast 2 guys into uh, lychee then and we'll get some slicing done and then I need to hop back onto the um, what do we call it now So 904 with off, so 904 and Dynamesh. I've just called them, they, they, they're like monsters aren't they, so it doesn't, if you're not going to engage with them and actually have a conversation with them in the game, um, then there's no point in giving them a name and a personality and whatever, so on the basis of these guys, when they meet your characters, they're going to be trying to eat you, um, they're not the kind of creatures you're going to try and reason with, are they, so... Okay, so gas one, gas two. So he is dynamesh, and now he is pre-processing.
Okay, and decimate cut. Nice. Do the same for this one, pre process. Actually, let's just undo that set. First thing we want to do this one, just need to slice the bottom off. Think about it. <coughs> Hopefully, it doesn't crap out on me. Right, guys, while this is thinking, I'm just going to go and grab myself another brew, okay? Just going to grab a cup of tea. So, I'm going to put you on a BRB, and hopefully, said brush is still alive when I come back. Uh, and I'll mute it this time as well, so I'll catch you guys in a minute. I'll see you shortly.
Right, guys, we're back now. And Zebrush is still being an ass. Great. Okay, so we're going to lose this. Fingers crossed. I saved it, or it auto saved at some point before. But this is uh, this is one of those moments, unfortunately. So there's two types of Zebrush crash. The one like this, where I have to make sure I turn it off. Um, and then the other one is uh, where it just turns itself off really randomly. <clears throat> I was really hoping I was going to come back and that would have been just done. do this guy which I could do without but it's not the end of the world unless I happen to have Dude, now let's redo his arm and let's get this thing saved so it doesn't crap out on me again.
think I'm good. Not exactly what I did last time around, but it works. So he is done. Let's smooth that shoulder out of touch first. Okay, let me save this. Oh, I'm not in the right place here to do this. Got him separate like this. It's going to move his whole leg forward a touch.
and go. So, copy that. Where is my, is it here? No. Got to be here. Okay, doesn't matter. I'm becoming homogenized here now. Oh, that's it. Bless me, Ra. God, that hurt my ribs. <coughs> okay. Um, there's one. Right, we're going to do another save, and then I'm going to try what I did before that made Zebra's crash. I have NetFab open which could cause a crash. I've got Logitech open which could cause a crash. Is there anything else that's going to screw me over? I don't think there is. Okay, so let's try what I did before. So I'm going to slice the bottom off. It's just a very slight um, trim. He's already had it, so we're good.
Okay, right. <clears throat> so, there we go. Okay, so let me hide my ruler. I'm going to pre process all now. So that's done that. I'm going to go decimate all. So take them all down to about 20% of their total count. Let's zoom in, make sure that's not too. Yeah, that's fine. Happy with that one. Very happy with that one, yeah. Okay, so we go back up now. We put the ruler back on. Set the ruler as the active tool. So then we've got the ruler is a hundred millimeters tall in the y-axis. So over here I've got my custom menu, um, and this custom menu has got um, a few key features in there. So it's got all the decimation and pre-processing tools in there. From the this is up here in the Z plugin menu. So we have the decimation master. So I've got my pre-process, pre-process all, pre-process current percentage of decimation and decimate current decimate all so I've got all of those things as as a uh, what you call it a shortcut over here <coughs> the next thing we've got is when you get to the 3d print hub so you do update size ratios okay so it now thinks this ruler is uh, 29 millimeters tall but it's not it's 100 millimeters tall so we're going to change it so we, go Z, so we now say that, so it now says, right, so the uh, x-axis from here to there is 32 millimeters. So that is 25 millimeters across on the base, plus so an extra seven millimeters from the edge of the base to the edge of this, which is fine. Um, and then back to front is 26 millimeters. Okay, so, <clears throat> we're going to go to uh, export options you want to export visible if you export all it's going to do all of your sub tools even the ones that are hidden so export visible only does what's on the screen so we're going to export visible uh, I don't care about poly painting and textures because there aren't any so turn them both off export to separate files so that each sub tool which is what's over here the sub tools over this way each of these becomes uh, a separate file and it's going to be named whatever the file is named <coughs> um, and then honestly I don't think this makes a difference but I could be wrong okay so I'm just going to go export to STL um, I'm going to go to miniature index Uh, in fact, I don't need a new folder, I need ghouls. Use subtool as a file name, and that means that everything saves as exposed to. Okay, so ghouls and guests get saved. <coughs> supports and things for them in a bit 
Nem majdnem. Right, here we go, back onto the lovely lady. So I think I'm actually pretty far done with her to be fair. Um Hair, wasn't it? Hair was the next thing to do. I think hair wise she's gonna have her hair in a bun. But I also think it's gonna be one of these kind of for this. I have no hair of my own so I can't even use that as a reference. So <laughs> it's uh Is that going to kill me trying to sculpt it? If not, let's try.
I didn't keep any of them because I didn't use them for anything, so I don't have them, which is fine. Um, let's do
want the hair to be kind of quite messy. Hey Bill, how you doing champ? Thank you very much. Yeah, 
she's coming on quite nicely. I'm nearly, I don't know, I think I just need to do the hair and then sort out this table leg, and I'm, I'm done then. And I need to get her launched into Kickstarter rapidly then, so I can make her own a keep. How are you doing, sir? apologize as well if anybody on Facebook or in uh, YouTube up until this point now has been messaging me uh, and I've not responded I do apologize uh, I have had my multi stream chat um, kind of disabled so I've not seen any of the messages coming in uh, not intentionally I will add it's uh, just an accident on my part Working on today, Bill. Just finished two gas this morning uh, before this one, and then we're just on to uh, to sort of her out and trying to get her wrapped up. Hey, graveyard, gravy boat. <laughs> Free glass dice. Oh, was this on the um, on the stream with uh, Winter's Tales? Ah, awesome sauce. You know, it's not me that's making the dice, yeah. <laughs> Congratulations, though. Cheers, Bill. Yeah, definitely. I do the miniatures, um, so I make I make miniatures. I don't do dice. Um, there is another sponsor that was on the show for today, uh, and I forget the name, unfortunately. Um, bear me one second. I'll find it for you then. So you'll be after um, Is it DN DGN? DGN or is it Ravens? Ooh. Let's click on the link here. Yeah, what you're after is <coughs> Ravenside, I think. Ravenside Emporium. I think these are the guys you need to check out their graveyard. Dice are lovely, aren't they? 
I mean, they're expensive, but I think you get what you pay for. Um, with dice, there's a lot of uh, a lot of cheap stuff around these days, but the, these ones are absolutely beautiful. With the um, the stuff like, preserved inside. I don't know if these guys do the uh, the liquid center ones as well, but I do like them. Yeah, this is me, Lion's Tower, uh, making miniatures, and yeah, the sharp dice are ace, aren't they? Yeah, making minis. Uh, I'm, I haven't actually caught the stream today, so I didn't see if uh, if, if my model made it onto the table uh, that I've done for them. But it was literally a last minute dot com uh, kind of sculpt. So it was. AJ's got the half finished version of it. It's not quite. It's not quite saleable yet. There's a few tweaks and changes we still need to make. But you know, I managed to get it turned around quite quick. So it was a, a feat, if nothing else. Yeah, I'll have to have a chat to AJ about um, about doing some giveaways with uh, with some of my stuff as well. I'm absolutely happy to do it. We haven't discussed it yet, but I'm absolutely happy to do it. Push this hair around a little bit here, make sure we get the uh get looking right. <coughs> Got literally, literally a set of dice with razor blades as the uh for the edges. There was um Oh, what were they called now? There was a company that were at a UK Games Expo this year, and they did like mega, like mega cool um, dice. I'm sure some of theirs were like they weren't quite razor blades, but they were they were metallic and they looked they had like really sharp spiky edges and stuff. They looked really kind of you know, really good. All right, how many more of these little? Um, Tail things do I need to put in the hair? Do we think?
<laughs> oh, do you know what? You've just given me a genius idea there. Let's stick a dice on the table as well. Yeah, mate. She's actually at the school already, isn't she? She's uh, she's been doing the tutoring today, mate. So, yeah, she's um, she's literally already there, and has been since nine o'clock this morning. So I think she'll be burnt out, and ready to uh, come home. To be honest, but um, So I've just grabbed a little set of uh, dice from um, from Colts. by Rayleigh. Um, I don't think you were actually on the chat this morning. But I think it was. Uh, I was saying about it when you were out, mate. So you uh, you missed the the discussion where I was saying about it. But yeah, she's uh, the school have asked her to go and do some um, some tutoring. So some of the kids who are kind of like a little bit behind and struggling a touch um, in the run up to like Sats, because she's uh, she's got 15 years experience as a teacher, um, and they know it. They've asked her if she can go in and do a little bit of tutoring for a couple of days a week. So from from today, she's doing Mondays and Tuesdays in the school. So today was her first day doing it. So we'll have to have a, a, a chat to her when she gets in, and we'll um, see how she's done. But yeah, she was very much um, not looking forward to getting back into a school. <laughs> so. Great graveyard gravy boat talking about the uh, well micro welding razor cutters onto the um, onto the edges of the dice. Do you know what? There's a oh, was it now? You get these um, stainless steel pins that they use for spears in uh, like historical war gaming. And they are like proper sharp. The times I've leaned over a set of uh, knights who have got like spears pointing upwards, and I've leaned over to grab something from behind them, um, and these things kind of like end up impaling you, uh, and it, it bloody hurts, frankly. Um, let me show you. Oh, yeah, turd. So these things here. Are like proper sharp steel pins 
So what I end up what I end up doing is kind of like reaching over something like that, and as I do, I end up putting my out that even hurt as I was demonstrating it. <laughs> end up putting my hand on it and impaling my arm. So I get all these little holes in my um, in my forearm when I'm painting models because I don't. Rather than moving them, I uh, end up <laughs> I end up just working around instead. Uh, and yet it's catastrophic for my skin. So, but yeah, everyone, like I say, two days a week she's going to be down there. It does mean that she's got a reduced capacity to like help me out, which is not so great. But um, you know, it's only a short-term thing while they get the kids up to speed. Oh, I quite like that one. I can stay where it is. And that one needs to flatten out. So. Oh, that would have been perfect had it not been for the stupid bit at the top. There we go. I have to say, I imagine there would be some like health and safety concerns about selling those things to the public. So uh, <laughs> that might be why you haven't seen them yet. I mean, people like me are impaling their arms on little metal um, spears. There's bound to be people out there who are going to really kind of like damage themselves on. Uh, Yeah, I don't think she wants a long-term job there, mate, to be honest. She's, like I say, she's absolutely done with teaching. Um, she did it for so long, and now she's, like I say, 15 years of teaching, and she's just like, she got out of it because it was a, a, a joke of a, of a profession now. Um, it's like, you know, mentally she wasn't doing well um, with all the stress and everything like that, of, of having to, like, go into a classroom, and every term there would be... Um, you know, they were working to a new curriculum or they've got some new kind of like, you know, stupid um, initiative going on in the school and they had to do all this like science curriculum and then she like, she spent ages and ages and ages of her own time like writing up all this like science curriculum for the whole school to follow um, and then when they launched it they turned around and went, oh yeah, we're not using that we've bought, this, we've bought into this one instead and we're going to use this and it's like, well, why did nobody tell her that before she spent like, you know probably the best part of about six months um, kind of like preparing this, this science policy and then she had to get up to speed with the new one that they were using so that she could audit it and uh, you know administer it around the school and stuff so uh, they're, they're just it's just a joke that like everything that they do is just it's just pointless and there's it makes more work for the teachers without benefiting anybody, and that's the that's the bit that really annoys her. Because like they even had this, um, they had these like, you know, how companies have these like nonsense slogans that they don't really live up to, but they'll use it for like you know appraisals when they say, "Oh, how do you embody the company values?" Um, well, you know, show me somebody who actually does. You know, what I mean, it's all it's all just box ticking, isn't it for? HR, so the HR can get like their awards and audits and stuff passed. But, but yeah, so she's uh, she has all these like values and stuff. And one of the values was you know don't do anything that isn't beneficial. And the amount of times I said to her, I said just pull, I said just pull that one out and throw it at them and say just you know I ain't doing this because it's not beneficial to anybody. And it all adds to her workload, you know, like she was working most nights till probably two o'clock in the morning. Um, <laughs> I 
<laughs> but yeah, it's hard to know. It's just, it's just, it is just nonsense, isn't it? And there's so much. <laughs> hey, you slide straight in. Join in, join away. I was saying, if you, as it's your first time here, my my wife works with me. She's um she does all of my uh, like admin and websites and uh, she look, puts all the new products on the web store and things for me. Um, and when we do when we do like trade shows and stuff, she'll be there kind of helping helping out as well. But like I say, prior to this, so once I got to a point where I was established enough and I had em enough money coming in that I could afford to uh, employ her, I had to employ her quickly to get her out of teaching because she was uh, literally at a wit's end with it. Um, but yeah, so she's now the, pro the problem. The problem we have with teaching in schools is like teachers want to be the teacher. They want to teach the kids. They're there for the kids. But the people who run the schools are like businesses. Um, they're business managers, so they're ru they're running the school like it's a business, and they don't care about the kids. You know, they do in that they get grants and stuff for the kids being there, and um, you know, for the school uh, achieving results and whatever else. So there's you know there's there's something resting on or riding on it. Um, but yeah, the uh, the issue is that the um, hang on a sec. So right, something's throwing me here, and I just realised what it is. It's the um, the material. I've got the wrong material on, haven't I? Um, for these new bits. Is it a white skin shade I applied? Is that right? Uh, MRGB fill objects. Is that correct? That's totally not right. That's way too white. Um, let's. And that's not right either. Oh, it's annoying now. I've got to try and figure out which one I used. Uh, bear with me, guys. I mean, there's literally one called hair, but I get a feeling I think that is actually reflective, which I don't want. Is it poly skin with white? No, that would be skin coloured. Oof. I was a teaching assistant and everything. I used to have to do all of the. Um, whenever she was up late doing work, I used to sit up with her doing it, um, like help literally, like stapling, cutting. I'd even write planning sometimes. You know what I mean? I'd, I'd be sitting there kind of helping her do the planning, like writing activities for her to do with the kids and all this kind of stuff. Oh right, so the uh, the, the model I made is now on the table on um, Winter's Tales. So as as they've now encountered it, I will uh, quickly pull up a render of it and I'll show you what we're dealing with. So, if you want to see, I don't know where I put it. <laughs> God, yeah. Yes, there it is. Okay, so the model. Oh, go away. Here we 
we go. So this is it as it stands. This is not finished, but it is what's on the table right now. There we go. It's like a big rock griffin type thing. So I'm only showing you this because I can, I can literally see it on the uh, on the table. And AJ literally had this off me yesterday. Um, and slammed it straight on the printer, and it's now painted on the table top on their uh, <laughs> on their second episode. So uh, yeah, it's been a rapid, rapid turnaround. Because I only found out about this on on like Saturday, I think it was. Guys, I'm just going to have to put you on mute because the wife's calling me, so bear with me a second. Okay, guys, sorry about that. It's alright. Um, my wife's walking back from the school, she got win over there. So, all is good. Okay, so this little uh, this little dice, um, I'm going to. Oh, let's bump the resolution up, polish it. Maybe not that much. That's fine. I don't want any of the numbers or anything on there, so we'll keep that as it is. Let's just divide that a couple of times to make sure it's smooth. Uh, 
And what colours do we paint the dice? Everything on this model so far is hand painted like this. Uh, I do gravy uh, graveyard, <laughs> gravy graveyard. <laughs> I do, I do do some custom commissions. Like I say I'm doing the stuff for uh, for uh, Winter's Tales. Um, I've got a couple of other clients who I do regular work for. Most of the stuff I do is um, like commercial stuff, so it's stuff that is going to be uh, sold on for for profit later. There you go. If you go onto the Discord channel graveyard, you can uh, the bunkers just posted for us. Thank you, bunker. You can ping me a message about anything you like on there. Um, Right, let's, let's take it up a bit with the white. Let's just come in touch. Oh, actually, I'm running out of time. I need to set us, uh, a commission section up on a website actually. So people can post inquiries through the. Uh, so oh, the roll, how are you doing, mate? How's it going, Greg? Yeah, it's uh, it's going to be down for the, the, the painter to decide actually. I was going to leave it on a 20, but who knows? Yep, this one is very detailed, it's fully poly painted. So it's uh This is my oh, let's get back to what I was actually doing on here. I was sorting her hair out and I've uh, I've deviated off and got distracted. Which is just annoying really but Let's just merge this hair together. Let's give it a good bit of resolution. Perfect. There we go. Right, guys, on that note, I'm going to have to uh, knock it on the head because Hayley's coming back and she's got Willow with her. Um, and yeah, I am. Not some more. Thank you for the follow. Oh, and fast lane forty one also. And graveyard, gravy boat, thank you for the follow. <laughs> yeah, I can do spiders. I, I need to do some actually because I've got some coming up for a, a campaign. So I'll be doing some spiders shortly anyway. Um along with some goblins and some other bits and bobs, but 
So this is my uh, this is uh, a Kickstarter model that's coming up soon. So she is now finished. Now that I've done the hair, so she's all completely done. Um, very happy with how the hair's turned out. Actually, looks classy, but a little bit messy, which is pretty much exactly what I was going for for her. Peacock spider. Oh, I like them ones. They're the ones who do the dances, aren't they? Yeah, I could do a peacock spider. <clears throat> So she'll have this table. The only thing I need to do is I need to do some kind of table leg here, um, and then we are we are good to go. Then, so the chaise lounge will be a separate piece. She'll be a separate piece. The cushions will be separate, um, and that's it really. But guys, I really need to go. I'm just going to, have to put you on a BRB for a minute because uh, Haley's just come back and I've realised she hasn't got her keys. So give me two seconds. And I'll be back with you shortly. Sorry guys, so it turns out Hayley uh, didn't have a coat because she'd left it in the head teacher's office uh, and the head teacher was at school uh, in, an in, in a meeting so she's walked back home without a coat on and it started raining so <laughs> so uh, graveyard, yep, stick and sex not a problem Uh, Art of the Roll, so yeah, um, I will be selling these as resin kits as well, so if you'd want one made up in resin, that'll be an option as well. Um, they'll be on my website throughout the Kickstarter process, I'm not going to run them through the Kickstarter, They're gonna, the, the pre-orders will go direct through the uh, through the website. Um, Hack and Slash, how are you doing? Thank you very much. So yeah, she's pretty much done. Um, anybody got any ideas for the table? leg what we should make the table leg out of do you think it should be a carved thing should it be just simple and plain or I feel like I can't really go too plain with it but I don't know if I don't know if to go witchy or go kind of elegant again um, do a similar kind of thing to the chaise lounge so it looks like it matches um, if I get time and I've got the inclination to do it there may well be <laughs> <Human>. <laughs> I 
<laughs> oh, I like it. Do you know, you say that actually, I had this idea um, of having imps holding it up. Originally, I was going to have the imps holding her spellbook. So there was going to be like, a, the spellbook was going to be massive though. And like the imps were going to be like crumbling under the weight of it. Um, but like struggling to do it because they were um, minions and whatever. Um, and then I've kind of like, it's ended up kind of like getting a bit, I don't know, a bit more chill, the whole thing. So she's got a cup of tea. She's uh, she's using her um, a tail to pour herself a cup of tea, as we can see. Um, she's magically flicking through a, a spell book. <clears throat> I'm saying she's all fully poly painted up, ready to go. So I just need to do like a couple of like little details on her now, like earrings, uh, bracelet, maybe a ring or two. Um, I might put like a little ring around the tail or something as well, like a little band. So just a, just a few little details just to kind of finish her off and make her look nice. Maybe a little anklet or something like that uh, as well. Uh, but yeah, she's um, she's coming on really nicely. I'm really happy with her. She's gone. So, uh, so yeah, I'll have to have a little look. Italian Iron Barbecue. Yeah, yeah. Um... If you post pics into the on the uh, Discord channel, on the Discord server, there is a, a thing there called uh, Miniature Design Discussions. There's a, a channel there. If you post anything, any ideas you've got for the uh, for the table leg uh, and whatever else, post them into there, um, and I'll have a little gander on them, and we'll have, we can have a chat off uh, chat off stream about it. <coughs> um, yeah, just make sure uh, when you're on the thing, obviously you can go in and post um, your Instagram channel, uh, any kind of self-promo things, it's anything you're selling or whatever else. So, oh yeah, I see. Yeah, that's nice, that'll work. That was it, we'll just show you that, so there we go. That's what that's what uh, Graveyard's just posted up. I quite like that, I like the look of that. Very snazzy. Yeah, they'll do quite nicely, I think. Right, guys, I need to uh, I need to get going because I need to go and um, <coughs> have a chat with uh, Haley and find out how a day has gone and check in with Willow because she's come back with a little sticker on her, all chufties. She wants to tell me what it's all about. So, I'm just going to go and have a little look and see if I can raid out to anybody who's on. Let's see. Well, I don't think he's going to be on for much longer, but you might get half an hour out of Mike Moans. So let me go and drop you in over there. Uh, and, uh, yeah, we will... I'll be back tomorrow at some point. Um... Yes, graveyard. That's uh, they'll match quite nicely, actually. Yeah, I quite like the style. Of yeah, if I put a little bit of that sculpted uh, filigree top stuff on there as well, that'll look even. Um, that'll match up quite nicely then. And I can do it with the uh, radial symmetry as well, so I can do it like once and like recreate it like four or five times over, which would be nice and easy. Um, yeah, I'm gonna go and raid you, raid you guys all into my moans. Um, so thank you for all joining me. Tomorrow I should be back on. <laughs> Brilliant, well worth knowing. I've got a few, uh, I've got a few bits where I'm doing some interior, well, some interior, some build, some medieval buildings and stuff like that for um, a, a separate project. It's gonna again another Kickstarter type thing. I'm gonna be running. Um, but if there's anything you want to see. Uh, from a kind of a modular terrain type point of view uh, for war games, then absolutely fire up uh, any posts into the um, into the Discord. So uh, I will be back tomorrow um, at some point. I have got the uh, cable guys coming around tomorrow to sort out our fibre broadband upgrade. Um, so 
until they've gone. I can't really go live, but they're due anytime between um, 8 a.m. and 1 p.m. So, worst case scenario, I may be on tomorrow night for a couple of hours. Um, so, we'll see how the rest of the week pans out. But I'll try and get some more stuff done. These gas I'll get loaded up and they'll be up on the um, on the uh, distributions for tomorrow. So everybody, will, everybody who's on this month's Patreon will get the ghouls and the ghasts. And then this lovely lady, I'll finish this table off and we'll get her posted up onto, um, onto Twitch <coughs> very soon. Uh, not Twitch, onto uh, Kickstarter. There we go. <laughs> right, guys, I'm going to go raid you off into my... Um, so we're gonna go raid Mike Moons. Uh, so if you go and uh, check him out, show him some love, and um, there we go. And I'll also see you all uh, soon. What's going on there? Oh, is it the capitals? <laughs> oh, mate, I already have, haven't I? <laughs> right, thank you all again for tuning in today, and I'll uh, I will catch up with you soon. Um, hop over onto the Discord to carry on the chat anytime you like, uh, and yeah, I'll I'll, uh, I'll be back with more of this uh, shortly. Take it easy, all later, taters.